Hey guys, it's Chris from Enola Gay, and it's time for Vulcan Debrief Live. Welcome to the most interactive airsoft show on the interwebs. It's the Vulcan Debrief Airsoft Live Show. Each and every episode is sponsored by the fine folks at Enola Gay and Elite Force. Check out their product lines at enolagay.com and eliteforceairsoft.com. Also, don't forget to sign up for the largest growing airsoft community in the world known as the Valken Alliance. We also offer alliance sponsorships for qualified airsoft teams. And the Valken Debrief also shares local and national airsoft events so you don't miss out what's going on in your region. We also give away sweet products from time to time, so the more you interact, the greater chances you win. And we work hard to bring you a new and exciting special guest during each episode. You can also find us at many airsoft events throughout the world. And if you miss any of our live casts, you can always catch the rewind on our YouTube channel or SoundCloud. So sit back and get ready for your Valken debrief. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's another week of the Valken debrief airsoft live show. One one five. That is correct. Did I get that right? Did I did you I do are, that in the right order? I did you it did. reverse. So I'm learning about broadcasting. Well, it was reversed to them, or was it reversed? No, to No, I reversed it, and I'm looking. So if I go one one. Is that, is that right at home? Tell me if, I, tell me if that makes sense. You, you guys tell us. You know, you're the ultimate judge. We love you guys. Hey, this is Kaiju over here. And this is Peltest. And you're on the debrief right now, guys. So this is, and this isn't a cool night because this is like their show night. It is. We're actually, in. we're opening the phone lines again. Mm. There was such a, 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 a fun call-in time when we were at SHOT Show. I kind of wonder who's going to be the first caller because we always have the one first caller. He's, he's kind of reliable. Do you think we can count on him again? Oh, you Mr. Mr. Ethan Vaughn? Sh- no, no, no names, no names. We don't use names here. <laughs> oh my gosh, who do we got joining us tonight? Well, we do have Ethan Vaughn. Which should 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 I do it? Should I go ahead and do it? I have a quick message for one of our viewers. Um, peanut butter, peanut butter. That's it. Just moving on. <laughs> Ethan Vaughn is our overachiever of the night. He was the High first. Five. To comment in the chat. Now he he wasn't the first to start viewing. Actually, Zeb was the first to start viewing. So Zeb. You have to comment to get the overachiever award. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a caveat on that overachiever tonight. Um, Sam Cedarstrom or Sean Cedarstrom, excuse me, is watching from the Dominican Republic on vacation right now. So I oh, think that's nice. That's overachievement as far as I'm concerned. He's that normally is. he's part of the uh, Arizona, you know that uh, that desert airsoft community down there. Um, but he's watching from. I, I gotta appreciate it, man. You're on vacation. You could be enjoying cocktails on the beach, and he's watching us. So yep. thanks, man. <laughs> tag your friends, get them in here, share the show. It's just, it's easy like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tag, Mr. Can tag. Mr. AJ Morris because Ooh. now I have all the winnings for his, for his loadout battle, for his gift package. Yep. Late, but I mean it's a little late, but you're still getting it. That's all that matters, <laughs> right? Like you know, hopefully he doesn't quit the sport before the package gets there yep. because airsofters have a lucky short branch. Lifespan. Hey, lucky, we're gonna see you uh, next good. weekend. And then, Ooh, what are you painting today, David? Let us know. Are you? Uh, oh, Dice Airsofts is painting miniatures again. Yeah, David's. Uh, he said he's painting and listening, like he does. I mean, we're, I, I guess we're the only time every he week can, yep. he can block out for painting now. Excuse me. Hey, uh, our intern will like this. Sam Nemo is watching. Sam, what's up? I hope your son is doing well off in the Marine Corps land. Ooh, could have been Army. Had to be a Marine. Of course. Okay. Just making sure. Well, here we go. Army. <laughs> we got Woodcock in the house. Okay. He's watching. There you go. We're, 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 are we Cody are Clay. Have they changed that over to something? Cameron new? Gully. Will... Oh, what's up, Hawk? How's it going, brother? Haven't Dalton's talked to him in forever. Here? Yeah, Dalton's right here. He said, yes. what up, boys? Uh, Will what Pace I... from Black Ops Bristol is in the house. Oh, Black Ops. How's how's Black Ops going? I heard there's good stuff going on up there. Are oh, they getting ready yeah. for the uh, big... Colony Wars. Colony Wars. And then August. the Nemesis games coming up too, right? Or is that later That's in the year? That's Autumn Fog in October. Is that That's October? usually okay. the Saturday before Halloween. Okay. I thought that... For some reason, I thought that was earlier in the year. No. I don't know why. I remember it being... They they do one in the spring, but I don't know if they're going to do one because they just had the baby. So we'll see what happens. Well, I mean, the baby could be a great prop. True. You know <laughs> I don't know if they want to make their baby a prop when BBs are flying. Well, I mean, you could make like... What if they made like the cocoon like the child was in, but see-through? 
So you had like the baby capsule, so that it's protected <laughs> but can still be like oh I don't know. <laughs> I would use I would use my baby. For we that. got Rich from <laughs> Shrike Tactical, David from Dice Airsoft. Oh, J. Irwin is on a tagging frenzy right Ooh, now. Oh, Snick Appreciate Chris. That. I met Snick at Foldagat last year. Good dude. Good dude. Oh, Fat Guy's in the house. Showed up out of nowhere. He said, yeah, we will be. I don't know what he's responding to, but they will be there. Uh, the Raptors are in the house. Dave Gibson just joined us. How's it going, buddy? Nice. Down there in town, Texas way. We got kind of a full house tonight. I'm really digging it. Um, yeah, and um, uh, Austin Laborde from Spindletop Airsoft reached out. We're going to try to get them on the show to talk about Spindletop, their shop down in Texas. That is a uh, brand new shop, right? They opened... They opened last year. I've been trying to remember when they opened. Was it October when I got the um, when I got the notification? But I think it was like October-ish was when they opened, wasn't it? No, but they were at Palooza. Oh, okay. In, you know, with, in May with all the all the branding all and do, stuff. All doing all that stuff? Okay, Coding. Cool. So, hey, um, tag your friends. We're up to 31. If we get up to 50, Airsoft Innovations sponsors <gasps> a grenade giveaway. Everybody watch out. Carl oh. Verduga himself just got tagged in the chat, so we need to mind our P's and Q's because <laughs> he's been putting out some propaganda lately. Have you seen that? Um, yep. They are they're, they're organizing the masses to fight the imperialists. Um, that's, it looks it, like they're gearing up for something big. Correct. I don't know. So uh, we want to give a big shout out to our sponsors of 2020. Mm, which, good ones. Yep. Enola Gay and Elite Force Airsoft. Uh, that kind of covers the whole gambit, doesn't it? Like that's guns, gear... No, they don't. Elite Force doesn't do beer. It uh, just doesn't cover beer. Doesn't cover beer. That's it. That's no. It. We'll, oh, we'll leave that to Derek. We got to tag Derek. But Nigel normally comes with beer. He's always good for that. So, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if I didn't say thank you once again for having that wonderful little shindig up in the High Rollers Lounge, that was uh, a lot of the food was fantastic. Oh, it was. Big old thanks for all you guys for setting that up at Elite Force. That was a ton of fun. Hey, we got Orhan from Rudiment Arms who um, doesn't return voicemails. He doesn't? Just saying. Well, if you mention the hit stick, he appears out of nowhere. A lot of people don't know. I know, right? You have to say hit stick three times, and then he just appears. <laughs> so, also, be sure to check out the Valken Alliance. Ooh, are we saying... We're saying multi-level marketing now, not Pyramid yep. Scheme. That's, that's, that's what we're correct. saying now. Head on over to Alliance, valkenalliance.com. Sign up. Uh, we, we send you're out you're some... If you haven't cute, done it yet, it's one minute. One minute of filling yeah. out stuff. That's it. That's we send out time. coupon codes just for you. Also, head on back over to Facebook and sign up for your region. Uh, what region are we featuring this week? Oh, we're featuring the Rockies region. That's tonight. what I'm talking about. Rocky Mountain love. Wait, oh, wait. that. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, Rocky Mountain appreciation. We're doing yep. that? That's, not, that's better. Right? And so, you know, the, the Valken Alliance Facebook regions are public. People can see what's going on in there. Uh, you still have to click to join. Yep. It still has to be approved. But we we're, ju- not very we're just trying to get people to share airsoft events into these groups so I, everybody knows where to go that's my new highlight of my week because i get to approve all those so like every time i get a little notification that someone wants to join the alliance that's another friend that's now in my yep. group it's kind of a nice little nice little nice little heart yep. right there every single time it's a lot of work for me to share every event i come across into every <laughs> single group but you guys that are already in the groups Share your events or events that you know into those groups so other people see them. I'm getting very well informed by that, by the way. Like, I actually spend most of my time in other regions so I can learn what's going on locally. Like, uh, it's really cool because I'm seeing a lot of, like, big scenario days and big anniversaries and big game days for local field. That's where I get my my local info now. So, if you're looking for that spot, especially because I see all those posts and all the big, you know, where can I play in my local area? Join your local area group and then you can find that out. Yep. Just saying. Oh, we got William Soto from Overwatch Tactics. High so, five. So he got me all excited last night. Well, something else whoa, got me all excited. Whoa, 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 got me all excited whoa, whoa, whoa. because and it reminded Are me of Are we sure him. this is radio appropriate? It is. It is. <laughs> so my wife and I had uh, dinner last night at Biagi's Italian. Where's that at? Is that over? Next to P.F. Chang's. Oh, okay. But on the drive back, we passed Chewy's Tex-Mex. The last time I had Chewy's was with uh, Soto... His wife, uh, Greg Alexander. Is that like a chain or? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't it's know. It's C H U Y S. Oh, okay. I was really hoping and, it was like Chewbacca's Mexican. And we we all met. We were at Palooza. Yeah. Uh, at the Evic Outpost, uh, Airsoft Palooza, and we all went to dinner there. It's amazing. Wait, is that the place that's across the street from the golf driving range? Is that the same? It's on Briargate, almost. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about like the one in Houston. Like, is that the one that we went to after hanging out at High Ground, or is that? No, 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 no. That's okay. not Chewy's. Oh, okay, that's a different one? Yeah. But that was good, by the way, too. That was, was. really rad. And close. It was. 
Uh oh, Miss Kaiju in here. It wasn't me. Wasn't <laughs> I? I don't know. <laughs> um, All right. So, I can't speak either way on that, Mrs. Kaiju. Um, I I plead the fifth ish. The fifth yep. ish. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> so uh, if you can't hang around for the show, or if you miss the show, or you know, for one week is you know it happens. Be sure to check out Valken Video on YouTube. Just look up uh, Valken Debrief. Takes you right to our playlist. You can watch all the videos and rewind. Um, so you don't have to worry about the comments from the Facebook video and stuff like that. Or where else they can find Oh, we're us? on SoundCloud, right? We can do the SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Thing. We're actually doing really well on SoundCloud. So I would prefer if you're going to listen to it somewhere, like, and not watch it, please click over to SoundCloud because, you know, views help. And that gets the message out there, gets us in the algorithm. Yep. Spreads the message to other SoundClouders. Oh, cool. and, and Zeb, your question, we're going to get to that tonight. Oh, we're talking we about are. that. Yeah, yes. you, inspi- you actually so, inspired this show with your Facebook post like three weeks ago. It right? is. You did. So, uh, Lucky Branch says, Chewy is a Mexican nickname for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Bill Miley, how was your uh, procedure, brother? Are you doing well? You recovering? Let us know. And if, and if not, we send you all the best wishes for your recovery as quickly as possible. Good vibes, positive vibes. Oh, so I have to call out Orhan. He just now listened to my voice now, and I just left now? it. I left it like what two days ago. We should just start leaving. Actually, you know what? That, that's how we're gonna guilt trip people into calling us back. We're just gonna call them live on the show. When we, if, if you don't answer the second phone call, you're getting a call yeah. live, and then we'll embarrass you in front of the planet. Ooh, Brandon Johnson's in the house. So, what we're gonna do after we come back from a commercial break? We are going to open up the phone lines because uh, we were uh, last week's show when we had uh, Joe from Ghost Dog Adventures on. Uh, a lot we, of fun. Or was it the week before? No, last week was was, was just no, fun. no. But so we no, we did we, we 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 talked about this a little bit last week. Yeah. So yeah. just by random, we came up uh, with a topic of airsoft products versus airsoft rules because there's been some new products out there, some products in the past, some new products that were just released. That are going to kind of throw airsoft rules at fields and national events. And it's promoters, a little unbalanced. Promoters are pretty reactionary. And that's yes. kind of um, been a problem is that you have a gadget show up. It, ca- it causes an advantage one way or another or a problem one way or another. People complain. And it normally takes about a year for the promoters to catch up with either authorizing it or banning it. Yep. And so, you know, maybe we can head off some of that. Right, and so we, we just want to hear everybody's opinion as we go through all these topics. So we're going to open the phone lines, tag your friends, get them in here. We're about 35 live viewers, 15 mm-hmm. more, and Airsoft we Innovations. We got some good stuff to give away? We'll give away a grenade. I want 100 because I want to I want to stand here and Vanna White a gun. The 100 is always a stand. 50 and the 100? 100, 100 is, is, is a gun. I want to Vanna White that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Just stand here and be like, oh. Oh, look at this beautiful prize you're getting, you know. But I can't unless we have 100 viewers. So I know, right? Get on that. Tag your phones. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back after this quick commercial. Look at that. We're already up to 38, almost 40. See how that works? You offer yep. a gun and they come crawl, they come flying in. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Hey, this is Shelly with Stampede Airsoft. <laughs> hey, this is Shelly with Stampede Airsoft. Check out the Falcon debriefs on Thursday nights. Also, follow us on Facebook and StampedeAirsoft.com. These are the Valken Accelerate Tracer BBs. These 6mm BBs from Taiwan are highly polished and seamless, giving you greater accuracy and consistency. They come in 2500 count bottles in various weights from 0.2 gram to 0.25 gram, and they glow bright green when using a tracer unit or tracer magazines. Thank you for watching, and please leave a review to tell us what you think. And we are back, Falcon Debrief Airsoft Live Show, episode number... I'm doing everything with subtitles. 115. (laughs) You never... I I just... So, I I just introduced my son to Police Academy um, this week. Oh, really? So, we watched the first one this weekend, and we watched kind of part of the second one. And what's his name, uh, the guy who does all the voices... You know when he does like the kung fu thing where he oh, like does yeah, like yeah. the he, he like he makes does his all move yeah but he stuff, makes yeah. his lips, lips move for a while and then he says the word and that whole I, sorry I'm too old if, if you're younger <laughs> than you're like mid thirties you just make fun of me right now it's okay <laughs> so to give you all an idea of exactly uh, what we are talking about so we're gonna we're gonna talk about one product first that was in the past that'll make it very clear of 
what we're looking for. Then we're going to open the phone lines, okay? But we have more, so if you guys don't have ideas, don't worry. We actually prepared this time a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. So. Just a little bit. <laughs> so, um, everybody remembers two years ago, SHOT Show 2018, Airsoft Innovations was in our booth, and they debuted the 40 Mike grenade. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, I'm a little disappointed with the name because... I like. I wish it was the forty millimeters, so then I could shorten it to the forty mic. That's the only. Re that's my only complaint. Right well, wouldn't you say it. forty mic, mic? No, I was always a forty mic guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I always. I, I cut it short. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing shot one hundred and fifty BBs in less than one third of a second at two hundred and forty FPS. And the question I have for you is, what what possible use could that have in a practical setting? And, and I'm not saying this to be derogatory. I'm not saying this to be negative. I'm saying, like, this is a gadget that serves no real purpose except for, I don't know, trolling your friends. You know I mean, what I mean? It, like, it, did get, it did get banned um, pretty quick at a lot of fields mm -hmm. because, uh, I mean, let's face it. When, when, you, when you're running with a, a Moss Cart uh, BB shell grenade um, and you, that's close up, you want to get, you know, pretty close, like 25, 30 yep. feet, and you hit somebody with this thing, it's just like... Oh, you, it just, you pucker it just, up really quick. Well, and the, the thing I'm kind of looking at, I mean, and I am not saying I do not like this product. I think it, I like any product that is just ridiculous and silly. And this is right up my alley because, uh, but at the same time, it's like, you know, how do you write rules around this? Because pretty much you have no choice but to overshoot someone unless like the only way you can really control it is you pull the trigger and then you move off target like as soon as you see him get hit but the bbs are coming out so fast that like yep. no matter what you're getting the load wait no i mean you're getting the full effect i can't say this without coming you're, off you're, inappropriate you're, I'm you're sorry. getting the full effect so um <laughs> yeah if, if anyone has ever actually experienced the the 40 mic whether they actually used it or was the, the result of it or they go to a field where they banned it i mean give us a call Oh, the look at there. Do there we? We, we actually have one? I hope we this do. is a legitimate purpose right here. Thank you for calling the Falcon Debrief. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Ethan. I'm just here to What's watch time. What's up, <laughs> Ethan? How you doing, man? Doing good, doing good. Have you been a victim of the 40 mic yet? No, I have not because my field banned it. Oh, okay. So you haven't had to run into that at all. What's uh, the weirdest or most annoying gadget you've run into under your local field so far? Um, I don't know about annoying, but a buddy of mine, we were playing last weekend or the weekend before that, and he had some tagging rounds and just some little phone golf balls, and it was so amazing just sitting behind something, getting ready to pop up and hear him here jump up and start popping off some six tagging rounds Ooh. with the other team, and you just hear the dudes in the distance yell hit. I'm like, oh, that's, that's spicy right there. Oh, you got man. some honorable players at your local field, because I have to say that I'm not pointing fingers, but often when you shoot at people far away, instead of calling hit, they do the look around and pretend it was a ricochet reaction. Have you noticed that? <laughs> oh, you, you see that flinch. So, but yep. I want I want to get back. I want to get back to the forty mic. Okay. You started asking about other things. I and, was just. I mean. And so, was did the field owner actually state, Ethan, why it was banned? Because our field does not allow full auto for. Let's see, we have a zero engagement distance with four hundred FPS. Oh, at, oh that's, at the that's fine. Field, which I really like. I don't. It's nice not to have to fiddle with your crap out of the box. That's big boy rules. Um, I like it. Yeah, and it was the same at the indoor. But um, it's, since there's no full auto, that's basically a full auto shotgun that's got the um, fire rate of an HPA gun. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could I, I could see where they're coming from with that. Did it get banned Even before? It up, yes. Did one get used on the field and then it got banned, or was this something you know, they just said no right off the bat? I'm pretty sure it was kind of like uh, somebody was going to buy it but asked before, and then they was like just shut it down. Oh, I'm okay. not 100% sure, though. I just know it was banned. So I guess the lesson there is either don't ask before you use it yeah. or... So, Comment in the chat. <laughs> yeah, ask for forgiveness. <laughs> Comment in the chat whether you think that the 40 mic grenade falls into the category of a full auto airsoft thing. I, I think that's a legitimate See, that's how analysis. My field classified it. What, yeah. what was the other 40 mic variant? It was kind of like a just one of them buzz buzz well, kills that shot 60. So, so the master mic was the answer to that. Yeah, um, master mic. Yeah, yeah, the master mic was an answer to that. So instead of like a stream. 
of BBs. <laughs> it was more of a cone, and it was less uh, less impactful. Now, with the master mic, I can justify that a little more. Oh, yeah. we hit 50. Yeah. Somebody's going to get Did a grenade. We, oh, grenade. Ethan? Yo, yo, are you going to give me something now? We, we, well, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. You already <laughs> have a, a free ticket to uh, Missouri Airsoft and Simulation site. Matt Holler gave that to you. Anytime you go down there, yeah, you, you, you get to play for free. And, and we got to so, bump you real quick because we got to uh, we hit fifty. So we you, hit 50. you were you were the inspiration for fifty. Yeah. You so high five. just so you know how this works, since we have fifty live viewers, Airsoft Innovations has sponsored to give away a one of their uh, reusable grenades. It's either an XL burst or a cyclone. I'll actually reach out and ask you because we we have both donated from AI. Ooh, so choices. the way you get picked is the more you comment. The greater right, the I'm chance you win. You guys to do that. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, right, Ethan. If you guys comment more, it's like more entries. Just, just if you didn't, if, if you didn't figure that so out. So we yourself. actually also got a, a voicemail. Let's see what this this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what Already? this voicemail says. God. I know. Busy, busy times. Hey guys, it's Bill Miley. Give me a call back. Bye. Bill Miley. Miley. Well, I don't. Do we have the ability to call someone? I don't, I don't know. know. Do we have that technology? I don't know if we have that technology. Let's, let's see if we can do a callback <laughs> real quick. Can we do that? So, and if not, Bill, just call us back again. Like the phone lines are still going. Yep, they're still open. So I, I think that's pretty unanimous. So you, you <laughs> all our viewers, you understand what we're looking for um, as far as uh, products. So, so do we want to do we want to open this to the chat or do we want to go on to the next one? Well, we're How going we on do? to the next one. Okay, we're let's just do going it. on to the next one. So, so, oh, here it comes the yep. next one. The, this is a, what, what year was this that this came out? Uh, was this Shot Show 2018 is when it debuted. This is the Troll Cannon, is what I've named and it. This and officially. it came out later that year. This yep. is the Classic Army DT4. Mm. I mean, from a, from just a ridiculousness perspective, it's cool. I mean, there's just there's just so much more gun than than you oh, need. Yeah. You know? I mean, but when you think about when you look at it, there. I mean, it is two barrels. It mm -hmm. is two hop ups, two magazines, but it's still one singular gearbox. Okay, so let's let's go down the short list of why this might be a problem. Um, every time you pull the trigger, you get two BBs instead of one, so it's not actually semi-auto. Okay, but but you only pull the trigger once. But you're still getting two BBs. So so would you would you viewers consider that semi-auto? There's two barrels. It's set on semi, but one BB per barrel comes out. And I'm going to make this is that semi. I'm going to make the slippery slope argument here that just like binary triggers, that one pull gives you two BBs. That's not semi-auto anymore. You are, as you like to say, not breaking the rules, but you're breaking the spirit of the rules. I guess, would that be the way to say it? Breaking the spirit of the rules, maybe? True. So, I mean, Zeb says, <laughs> reloading that thing So, Are you speaking from experience, Zeb? I mean, like, have you, <laughs> have you tried to get two in there at once? or Lucky Branch actually says, double tap, baby. So really, with one trigger, would you, would you consider that a, a double tap? Uh, yeah, I mean, double tap, or I consider it a, a, a binary trigger, essentially, except instead of binary, you just have two barrels. So now Jim Hurst says, nope, no point for me to have that rifle. I'm actually, I'm actually curious, James, why, why do you say it, it's not for you? I'm very curious about that. I think mostly the reloading is what would drive me away, <laughs> just because I would constantly forget to reload one of, one of the mags. And then I would hear that popping from the dry fire sound, and then I would reload the wrong mag every time is where I feel that I would go with that. And then here's the other question. like, Does, does it have individual mag releases for each magazine, or does both mags drop at the same time? Caller. Who's calling? Hey, thanks for calling the Valken Debrief. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is David Fordyce of Dice oh, Airsoft calling you guys. How's it going? From the Great White North. I am honored. I mean, actually, our state kind of looks like Canada right now. We've been kind of snowed in for a couple of days. What's up, David? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Just painting some Warhammer while listening to you guys. So I heard you were working on a Shadow Sword tonight. Is that the full, like, 5,000 guns am. coming out of it, Shadow Sword? Or did you go for, like, a big-ass LAS cannon and nothing else? Oh, I just went full... 
maximum power gun and put another turret on top. Nice. <laughs> All the guns. If, if you have if, like uh, the the, sh- the Bane Blade or Shadow Sword or the the big super heavy tanks in uh, Warhammer 40k, and think about like, a tank that looks like an armored cruiser from like 1910 with guns just sticking out everywhere. Like there's just Sponsons and Gatling guns and it's just great. Turrets on turrets on turrets. <laughs> I mean, it's like a, it's like a child designed a tank. It's great. So what's your question, brother? Or comment. Or comment. Well, speaking of the 40 mic, if you think that's bad, I'm going to be building a Doom BFG a, for Airsoft. Are, are you talking going about... to fire three or four 40 mics at what? once. Wait, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. You're building the big friendly gun, is the is from it, from Doom from Doom the BFG like that the gun that killed Satan, that that's what you're yes, building. Yes, that one. I'm going to be building that when it's an airsoft project. So does it fire all three forty mics at once? He said four, four, or yep. does it have like all three or four at once? Oh, it's the one trigger. Because you know what I was envisioning was like kind of a giant revolver, like uh, Hellboy's. Uh, what's Hellboy's pistol called? Um, I can't remember. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, imagine four 40 mics rotate that you, you know what I'm saying? Like a big six shooter. That's what I was imagining. No? Oh, no, it's just going <laughs> to launch them all at once. Oh, you're, you're, you're a mean <laughs> dude. That's, that's... Woodcock just said, what the hell are you talking about, Chris? <laughs> when what? you went to your whole uh, Warhammer. Well, because I'm, I'm speaking to one section of the audience. It's like when you speak on Star Wars or, you know, like there's, there's a 40K section of our audience. Yeah, that, it's, it's David. That I, no, there, there's more. Oh, okay. There's Chris. We're everywhere. We don't know. <laughs> We're hidden. As soon as you, here's how you sell 40k to anybody. You just go like this: Hey, they're 10 foot tall space knights with uh, that fire 75 millimeter rocket guns and giant walking robots that fight each other. And that's all you need to say. And then it's like game on. Like that's the whole world. Yeah. So Doug Smith <laughs> actually made a comment about the the 40 mic. About he's actually had it. Um, he never encountered a 40 mic indoors. But he's seen multiple guys shoot them at him through brush cover outdoors. They don't have enough power to push through the bush and don't have much range. They seem pretty worthless outside. Well, I mean, I, I have to say high five to Doug. You came up with a legitimate use for that gun, that, 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 that device. But apparently the lower FPS doesn't actually let it get through brush and cover. Yeah. You know, so. So how, how, is, how is the 40 mic um, accepted up there in... Uh, Canada? BC area up there. Well, I haven't experienced it myself, but for the most part, if it's used within reason, typically outdoors it's used, but a lot of the indoor fields typically won't allow it because of it just putting out that much volume of fire at that close range. So, David, you're, you're making the responsible air softer argument? A little bit. Okay. I, I just want to let that sink in real quick. The responsible air softer argument. Yeah. <laughs> all right appreciate dude. it brother thanks no, for calling rad, in, man and please send me some pics of that monstrosity you're building because i would love to see oh, it. i will I, and it's going major. to be a big effing gun awesome man. that's <laughs> great right. thanks dude um quick good point from turk from rudiman arms uh did we just get another phone call no no, no oh, i was okay. just hanging up um just to play devil's advocate in their defense unless you get companies pushing the limits of rifles platforms etc absurdness then things that wouldn't present themselves as exotic, I suppose, just a thought. That is a brilliant point, Turk. I really appreciate you bringing that up. I am not downplaying pushing the limits in any way. All of these products have a space, if nothing else, but just pushing the envelope of what's what's possible. And the fact that we can see those, yeah, 100%. That's part of the reason why we're doing this show, because I'm hoping that at least we'll cover one thing that someone hasn't seen yet, maybe, hopefully. But... You know, you guys are probably more better informed than we are. So, um, <laughs> David Pollock actually wants to see um, a video. Oh, hold on. Oh. So, uh, so let's see. I'm going to fast forward. Is this from Airsoft Cheaters and Flipouts or no? This is. <laughs> so I'm going to see if I can get the uh, the uh, the full the full goodness. Yeah, yeah. We're going to see if we can get the full goodness here. That's a short rifle with a lot of grenade launcher on it, I have to say, from that thumbnail. <laughs> I know, right? If you guys just bear with... Ooh, ooh, sorry, excuse me. If you guys just bear with us for just a second, we are... We have such a talented booth crew right now that they are creating graphics on the fly. Oh, it is... It like, is like, right as we speak. It is amazing. Watch this. I'll do a countdown, and that's how quick this will be done. Five, four, three, two, one... Bam! All right. Ooh, did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> look at look at that Ooh. thing. Ooh, look, look at that thing going off. I mean, okay. I mean, 
I don't think I've watched this whole video yet. I've watched secondary. For, ugh. That is just craziness. That's mean. Just super mean. <laughs> oh, oh, oh did I, you I, see her wreathing in the back? I like the the, the grab and hop. Range. That's always a good one. Watch this. Just destroys that. Clay. Look at that. <laughs> just destroys that clay pigeon. That, that is an impressive shot with that, I have to say. Like, oh hitting my that clay. Goodness. I wonder how many clays they had to go through to make that work. <laughs> now, the only downside to this, now looking at it, is that I would... Uh, there's going to be a lot of videos that men are going to use this to represent their, their gentleman parts and shoot BBs out from that is the only <laughs> downside. Now, watching the full video. I mean, and I think, actually... AI when making the video. If you notice, they were shooting from the hip on purpose. Is all I'm saying. They were. I mean, they were. They were. <laughs> so, I mean, but that's pretty dope. Though. Like, I, he, no, it's cool. You know, no, I'm I'm actually impressed with our, our booth crew that David Pollock. Hey, do you got a video clip of it? We're able to actually act pull as, it up. Act as if we've been there, man. Come I know, on, like man. just act as if we've been there before. You know, like yes, we do it all the time. See, there you Here go. See? Like, just, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Normally, I'm the one lifting the curtain, and you're the one like shut up, just play the game. You know, like yeah. see, we got to change roles occasionally. So, um, all right, moving on. Ooh, what so, we got next? So we, we, we class, talked about the PC4. Yep. Do we, did we cover that whole thing? I mean, basically, we just have, yeah. we, we haven't decided. It's, I mean, if, if people, people don't consider it semi. I mean, there are some people in the chat saying, hey, one BB per barrel is still semi only. And you know what, you know what more than anything I, I see looking at that? It looks heavier than a normal rifle. So if you want to carry that and carry like an extra like four pounds of gun around when you don't have to for 12 hours straight... More power to you. Go for it. I'm not so going to So, Jonathan Rudolph says, Kicking Mustang. Uh, I'm assuming that's a YouTube channel. He's an English guy who does sniper videos. Oh, here. okay. Posted a YouTube video coming around a bus and face shooting another player. Off. Whoa. Okay. I actually, With the 40 mic? Yeah. Uh-oh. We got another caller. There, there was more to that story, though. If I remember the video right. What's up? Hey, thanks for calling the Falcon Debrief. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, guys. It's Bill Miley. Hey, what's hey, up? Hey, Bill. How How's it going? going? Bill from 325 Area Code. I'm practicing my radio prompts. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Abilene, Texas. Abilene, Texas. Nice. We wow. Went. You know what, Bill? I am a what? Cooper Cougar graduate. Ooh. Also, I know. Also a Wildcat Ooh. graduate. My daughter was a varsity cheerleader at Cooper. Did you did you do high school or was it college? I was a gymnast at Cooper, and then I was, was a, a cheerleader at AC. I was about to say, that was going to be almost perfect <laughs> alignment if it was like right school, right sport. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, if you guys had the same English teacher as, as like, it, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bill, how, how's your, uh, you recovering well? Are you going to be getting back on your feet playing some I airsoft? Am. I am. I got to play a couple weeks ago before my last brain surgery. Oh, that's great to hear. So prognosis is looking really good? It is. We're awesome. actually in the process of opening a field here, ATX Airsoft. Oh, that's great to hear. So oh, wow. do you know how to include us as a host for events so we can promote your opening and all that stuff and give you all the loves? Did we lose him? Did we lose Bill? 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 Did you mute us? Call's still going, but I think... I know. He might have muted us. Or might have did off. you did you mute by accident? No, or is that the I, mute? No. I can't ever tell. See? Is it muted? Now it's okay. muted. Now it's unmuted. unmuted. So, um, I think we lost Bill. I think we lost Bill. So, Abilene does not have as good cell service as we hoped. So, uh, Bill, yeah, the, please the, call the, us back. The, oh. There we go. Are you there, Bill? Yeah. Awesome. All right, there we go. Cool. We got worried there. Uh, yeah, so, I'll talk to Rob Pierce and find out. So yeah, just include us as a host in your uh, face in your Facebook events when you do your opening or any of that other stuff, and the, we'll promote it. The last shop was Castaway Airsoft. It was. So we need to yeah. uh, we need to Both make sure you guys Castaway. are strong. My son actually worked for Castaway. For really? A long time. So did he work for Castaway under Rick Kastner, or did he, he work under uh, Castaway um, when the other gal bought it from Rick? Actually worked for Crystal. He worked for Crystal. Oh wow, okay. cool. Hey, by the way, could I get some love in the chat for Bill and some well wishes and high Give fives for getting back in the sport? Okay. I know you guys are – I'm already seeing a little bit of that in the chat, but I just wanted to do the official pull on the heartstrings there because, you know, we're a family here. We love all you guys. Yeah, this was number 10 brain surgery in a year. Oh, dude, you're a trooper, man. I'm sorry to hear that. So. Dude. So, but I'll be at Southern Front in a couple months. Awesome. Oh, nice. That is awesome to hear. And, and, and Bill, uh, our – Mod AI 3.0 says, did you know in Abilene, Texas, it is illegal 
to sit idle or loiter any place within the corporate limits of the city for the purpose of flirting or mashing. What's mashing? Is that like a, a version of flirting? I, I Is that like know. the monster mash? Is that a dance? I don't know. <laughs> if, if, if you're part of the Abilene local government, please let us know what is the definition of mashing. Is I that, have no idea. Yeah, please report so, back to us, Bill, on that. Let did us, let did us you have any uh, comments about uh, either the, the 40 mic, the DT4? I like the 40 mic. I'm actually from Maryland. And really? up there, it's legal at a lot of the outdoor fields. What, um, what part of Maryland are you from, Bill? Just to, not to cut you off there, but I, I get excited. Actually, Westminster, Westminster, right outside. Um, are you guys familiar with Paintball Sports Land? Uh, I'm not, but I went to Richard Montgomery High School in Rockville, and my wife went to Whitman in Bethesda. So I'm familiar. Okay. I'm, uh, I, from West. I, yeah, so I spent my formative years in Maryland. Very it's cool good. to hear. Love Maryland. <laughs> so, so they allow the 40 mic up there? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. some other fields. As long as it's outside, the indoor fields don't really think too okay. highly. See, now that that's that's a caveat. You know, you, you know, know, we haven't we haven't di- differentiated, you know, where it's been specifically, Ooh. whether it's indoor or outdoor. And I can think. You know what? I'm shocked. At, why hasn't the master mic made its way to speed soft? Because that'd be a great way to start the game. Like you just put a 203 on your rifle and you just <laughs> you just shoot down the field and hose, and then you get them run into their their points of domination or whatever you call it in speed QB. <laughs> but that, no, I'm I'm not being like that's oh, that's, serious, that's the use I just I just I finally came up with a oh. use for it. Okay, Douglas Brian Boline says, "Nice, I'm from Germantown." Oh, Germantown, that's actually coming up in the world. Nice, uh, nice. Germantown used to be a uh, a hot poop hole, and now <laughs> it is um, becoming kind of the place you want to live. Nice. Cool. Well, thanks for calling in, Bill, giving us your opinion and giving us an update, brother. And feel better soon. Right, High man. five. You guys take care. You Positive too. thoughts, brother. Awesome. Oh, All dude, right. I love when we open the call. I, I really kind of, I'm kind of sad that we don't have the technology mm-hmm. to do a guest and the phone lines at the same time because these are kind of so my favorite show at this we're point. We're going to go to the next one, What's which next? is pistol carbine kits. Okay, yeah, this is. Check uh, this one out. This is a DMR <laughs> carbine kit made from a Marui SOCOM Mark 23. <laughs> that's, that's a gas because, blowback rifle. Because a, a lot of people. Or a lot of fields, that, or an event, you don't have to chrono nope. your pistol. And they don't have ammo requirements for pistols, so you can yes, have a no, extended mag. You can have as it. many pistol magazines as you want at events. That's the big secret to AMS, is you just load up on pistol mags. I mean, No one thinks about it. Do you, do you viewers think that, I mean, this is kind of pushing... I'm going to say right off the bat, this is a sexy looking gun. That, I that's, mean, that's, that's would that fall one. under the, you know, sort of like a national event host, would that fall under DMR rules... Or would that fall under pistol rules? Or just rifle rules. Or just rifle rules. I mean, I mean like, well, we have Will Soto right here in the chat, so I think he can give us, like, Will, in your games, what, what would you classify this as? I mean, you're here, you, you own a company, make, make the call right now. Make it. <laughs> There's decide. another one. This is, a, this is actually a 3D printed carbine kit for a Glock. You can actually get that kit off of Thingiverse. Is that what's that? Is that an extra mag on the front there? It is. It's an extra mag. Holder. That is also like your 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 foregrip. It, I like the idea of that. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. I like the foregrip mag holder combination. That's kind so, of cool. So, so would that fall under pistol rules? Or would that fall under rifle rules? Now, see, or SMG rules. Well, so I would I say mean, that falls under SMG. That's a shorter barrel. I mean, that's kind of an SBR level, you know, barrel length. The one previously, now that was a long barrel rifle. So. Yeah. I mean, I guess it just depends on the kit. I mean, are we now judging? You know, that that's that's a hard thing to answer because. <laughs> so Lucky says so. he can, he can get behind pistol carbine kits because he has a Glock 18C with the micro Roni kit. He says it's lots of fun. But what would you classify it as, Lucky? Oh, Come I on actually now. that that's what I'm putting together for this season. I want to have my sidearm be a G18 with a Roni kit on it. He beat me to it. Mr. Oh. Salt Cider, newly found father is in here. MK23 carbines are amazing. Oh, Soto says DMR rules. DMR rules? Okay, mm-hmm. we have a decision. It's a DMR. Now, the second one. Oh, Jonathan Rudolph, though, says pistol rules. Ooh. And then Soto comes back and says, no, that's an SMG. Oh, no, the second one, the Glock. Yeah, the second the one's Glock an SMG. One. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, honestly, it Regardless, it's still a pistol. But, I mean, I think we've established that everybody, that it's not a pistol. It's... It's more than a pistol. You're just using the pistol as your, your, your power source, I guess. 
you know, top fan Michael Bright from the Direwolves, Great White North, says mm-hmm. when those MK23s are set up right, they can shoot as far or farther than an AEG. Those kits make sense. So you know who has a really good video demonstrating that is um, uh, House Gamers up in uh, Canada. He he put a, a foregrip and a big old scope on his Mark Twenty Three, and he went out and was like lighting people up with it. And like <laughs> I mean, also another good example would be Punk and his super short sniper rifle. Kind of the same idea, but like you know, I mean, he shortened the long rifle. It is. It, the it's 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 a stubby sniper rifle with a pistol. It looks like a pirate rifle, but it literally, I mean, the barrel's like literally I mean, this he, long. He, he just, can snipe with that thing. He just did it backwards. He just took a big gun and made it small yep. instead of making small gun big. You know what I mean? It's just... <laughs> Doug Smith says, I threw up in my mouth a little. You can't have a DMR pistol slash carbine or whatever that thing is. I say it's a pistol or SMG How, rules well, here's for Here's the sure. question. How easy is it to get the pistol out of that kit? Because it would be really rad to just hit a button and pull your pistol out and then go clear the house. Like, you don't actually need a separate sidearm. You just detach your pistol from the big rifle kit that would be cool so ethan has an interesting comment What's you that? would have to have a barrel length rule for dmrs an fps rule and then i don't think you need mag rules for a pistol as long as uh gb gas blowback I gas guess. blowback yeah. as you don't have extended mags no, hold on caveat to that ethan i think you forget there's those lovely twins from florida who make every pistol a high capacity Oh, with the Kudals. Yes, Tap Airsoft has ruined that for life. I mean, and not in a bad way. I mean, they will tap anything. They will make a drum adapter for anything. (laughs) Orhan has a very good question. What's that? Is a Transformer just a car? No, it can be anything. No, 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 but no, no. He's, he's comparing to the pistol of the carbine kit. Yeah. Is a Cranformer just a car oh. or is... is oh, oh, no, I fully understand. No, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Megatron was a gun, remember? Gen 1 Megatron. He was a a Ruger. And here's a funny story behind that if you guys didn't know. Uh, Check out on Netflix. They got that How the Toys Are Made thing. And the reason he was a gun and everybody else was a car or a fighter jet was just that was the most popular kit made by this robot company. And then Hasbro branded it as one of their Transformers. But there you go. They can be Transformers. So uh, Soundwave was a jukebox or was a a, a boombox. Yeah. He would be anything. He would turn it inside. So we got some interesting things going back and forth. So, you know, like Jonathan says, you know, barrel doesn't extend. It's just able to shoulder it, which yeah. there are pistol kits where it's just furniture. It's just be able to shoulder yeah. it like the ASG BNT USW. It's, you know, it's incorporated a buttstock so you could shoulder it. But honestly, as long as you, like most of those kits have a hollow barrel space anyway. And if you just have a longer inner barrel, like you a, can like extend a, it. Well, anyway. a Glock, you could not do that. Okay, yeah. Because when when the slide comes back, oh, the, I the, forgot the, it does the, the, the barrel can't. Yeah, I forgot. So, but for a non blowback like the SOCOM Mark Twenty Three, then you just put a longer barrel. You could just put a longer barrel. You could put a longer barrel in that. So, uh, I almost said Woody J brings up a good good uh, point here is that DMRs should be based on real life DMRs, i.e., throw weight magwell. Now, this is a good point because this brings up immersion. Versus airsoft reality. Yep. You know like what the I mean? M110s. Yeah. And... So, I mean, should it... I, can t- I totally get the immersion aspect of it, but also I like the fact that it visually looks like a DMR. So if you're on a local skirmish field or you're uh, an admin at a big game, you can actually identify who the DMR people are so that if you see them get too close and bring their rifle up, you know that they're violating rules. So, no, that's yeah. a very interesting point. L- Lucky Branch does say, now at an event... I don't use my Glock 18C with the Roni kit because I like to use it with the Tap HP yeah. drum mag. It doesn't translate well at events, but local day is a blast. I am really looking forward to running around with a drum mag on a pistol every time I go to skirmish days. I've already stripped down basically to a t-shirt and a pair of cami pants just because I don't want to get my jeans messed up. But, I mean, if I can go even farther than that and just have a pistol with a drum... Because I just I now love, I know I love you don't like futuristic guns, but I mean, look at that. Oh no, Glock. I think it looks great. I mean, you really I, like how that looks. I actually really do. See, that's and that's <laughs> that's a big step for uh, uh, for Pell Test. Well, I mean, you know, and here's what I like about it: it's not full space gun. You still have rail on top. You have rail on the bottom. It's useful. It's not. It's not different for the sake of being different. It's different just because yeah. it's not trying to like get sued. <laughs> but I think you know we're making a different definite. definite 
uh, difference in the chat where event hosts actually say in their rule set, like Third Coast, American Mills. Yeah, Doug Smith just brought that up about TCA. It must look like a real DMR firearm that's in, in the real world. You know, so it's probably... At local fields, open play or even weekend scenario play at, at your local field, these are probably all good to go. And you know, here's what I here's something about having DMRs that look like DMRs. Um, I like it if you're a heads up player, like you're a player who pays attention to what's around you, because then you can gauge if someone can outrange you or not. Because if you see that 308 come up and you got an M4 or you know a normal rifle, you know that guy's going to have an advantage, so you need to get to cover right away. Compared to if you see someone bring up essentially a rental gun that they brought to a national event, I know I can safely watch his BBs fall you know, 20, 30 feet in front of me and then go take him out. So I like, from a thinking player perspective, I like that a lot more. So next up is we're going to talk about the ICS CXP Ooh. ARC. Yep. A-R-K. Yep. So... This uh, debuted at the 2019 MOA exhibition. What's MOA? I don't know. It's Asia. Is it? It's either in Taiwan or China. It's If you can come up with a good explanation for what MOA stands for without getting too racist, please put that in chat. So it's not the gun itself (laughs) that we're talking about. It's the hybrid smart trigger that they've installed so why don't you walk us through what that actually means so what that actually means i mean it's got all these great features but the hybrid smart trigger what it does is you tap the trigger it shoots burst you hold the trigger it's full auto that's a little dangerous so when so when you're looking at that i mean semi only events for non machine guns i mean you could i mean you could Excellently hold that trigger down and you shoot full auto. I, I would say depending on your trigger hold um, and if you're not quick enough on the release, you could probably get that to where you fire it in two or three round bursts and no one really notice. You know what I mean? Like that's... Yeah, and Lucky says, yeah, you can change the rounds per second as well. So if you slow down the RPS... Honestly, now that I think about it, if you slow down the RPS enough, you could just make it seem like you're doing this and you're just doing this. Okay, now, but here you go. Now, yeah. now you're talking about like a binary trigger. Yeah. To where with one trigger pull, you're getting multiple shots. Oh, no. So I'm... just... So for binary, for those that are watching, you pull once, it shoots. You let go, it shoots. So this is technically... Even if you slow down the RPS, one trigger pull, it's like... Bat, bat, bat. It's still... And that's what I'm saying. You slow I mean, down the RPS enough that you can not have to do this. You can just fake so it and it doesn't sound me, like you're... You know what I mean? To me, it's not semi-legal though. Yeah. Semi-only legal. I, I would have to say that... you know, And honestly, like I, I know it's kind of a, a crazy request, but honestly, like everybody who doesn't have an automatic weapon at, at Milsom events... I think, you know, I mean, it's not really like a popular opinion, but everybody should be locked out in the semi. I mean, you know, when you think about it, I know. And man, that, that tact, it just looks good. That is a good looking AK. It's a foldable sideways, foldable stock. You know what that, that reminds me a lot of, and it's quick change. That looks like, that looks like a hybrid between the, uh, AK, whatever that Swedish AK 16 or whatever that gun that they do. And, uh, the Polish version of the AK that's in Hmm. uh, five, five, six. Gotcha. Which I actually got to shoot those back in the day, and it looks like a, it looks like an AK, but it shoots five five six NATO, and it's just the weirdest feeling in the world to pull that trigger, and you get like an M four recoil mm-hmm. instead of that big seven six two by thirty nine or four seven six two by thirty nine. Did I get that right? Yeah, you know that big kind of hit to the shoulder. It's a weird feeling. So cool so you know I'm I'm curious what 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 our viewers think, and and call in if, if you have comments on um, triggers. So basically we're. You know, we're not knocking the arc. We're just talking about the trigger sets. When you can manipulate the trigger programming to shoot outside normal event rule sets. This requires a lot of honesty and a it lot does. of self-restraint from players. It does. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that I might be in that group that if I had the capability to just change things anytime I wanted, I might take advantage of that. Which is True. why I shouldn't have one of these trigger systems, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky Branch says, or be a real man and carry an HMG like a PKM or oh. 240 Bravo. Oh, who's calling? 607 area code. Don't give him up, man. What do you mean give him up? This hey, is- thanks for calling the Falcon Debrief. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm Aaron. I'm calling from Binghamton, New York. Oh, cool. New oh, York. Nice. And what was your name again? Aaron. Aaron. Hey, what's up, man? Not much. What's up with you guys? 
just another you know, another wonderful night here in it's Thursday beautiful night, Colorado. So we're at the ranch hanging out with you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do you got for us? Well, I was just thinking of the way you were saying about how the trigger can be programmed to the full auto or the burst if you pull it right. That's the games I play in. You can't do burst at all unless you're an OMG. Okay. So it's full auto only. So that is that your OMG. local field or is that like the Milsom games you go to? That's the Milsom games I go okay. to. So you're definitely in the department that it's kind of a waste for you because you only ever fire single, basically. Right, right, unless you're an LMG gunner. Okay. Now, at, in, in your neck of the woods, when you have LMG rules, does that ha- is that just basically anything with a drum mag that's designated as an LMG, or does it have to have, like, a feed tray cover and be heavy and look like a machine gun? Oh, it's got to be an LMG. Okay. A real LMG. And no you, M4s with drum mags. So do you guys allow, like, Shrike-style stuff, like the G&G LMG or the Crytek LMG? Yes, they actually okay. do. I actually just got the G&G LMG the other day in the oh. mail. <laughs> so how, have you uh, gotten a, to fool around with that yet, speaking of which? Because I haven't actually talked to anybody who's gotten to mess with one yet. How have you? Uh, how do you feel about that? It it's feels like an awesome gun so far. I haven't been able to play it yet because it's February in New York, so there's well, not much playing true. going on right now. <laughs> true. What's your uh, What's your favorite local field you like to check out? I uh, go to EMR. It's where they have bad blood every year. Yeah. You know what? We, we are, are EMR. EMR. Hold on. Let's see if we can oh, get the chat to do this. Hold, hold on. Ready? Ready? I got to tag go. Timmy. We are. And now it's the chat. So are you guys ready? One, two, three. We are oh, EMR. EMR. Oh, oh, there we oh, go. No, no. You guys, you guys, you guys got to type it <laughs> in the chat. Okay. I, I failed. But <laughs> on the upside, Austin from Spindletop finally joined us. Hey, what's going on, man? I haven't seen you in a... <laughs> Well, I was going to say Coon's yeah. age, but that's probably inappropriate. Like, yeah, I that's probably that. inappropriate that's not, that's not a good thing to say. No, so I'd yeah. say, I haven't seen you in a while. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for calling in, Aaron. Yep, have a good night, guys. You too. too. Oh, Zeb joined. Uh, okay, so Zeb got it at least. And he's up in the EMR area now, too. So it's good that he's repping local EMR love. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So next up, Zeb. Yep, this, this is for Zeb. This is this is the one you wanted to know Should about, Should we Zeb? pause this and put it at the end so we can keep him watching till the very end? Should no. we just, just keep teasing it and do a commercial and tease it and do a do commercial? That. Can we do I that? I don't want to do that. <laughs> okay. So um, this is... Now, this actually debuted last year, but it is now... I mean, it is now available. Well, it's not only available. Well, Zeb just posted that he got them in the It's going to be available. No, he's got them, he got them in his hand. Oh, he got he them has in his them hand. in his gotcha. hand, just posted yesterday. So Zeb, please, if you, I know you so, couldn't help yourself. You probably tested. This them. is please the PTS know, so. EPM one, two hundred and fifty round mid capacity magazine, which means there's no winding. I think that's a lie. It's not a mid cap. It's it's a high cap that just doesn't require winding. I mean that that's how I'm going to define it. So okay, so that <laughs> goes back to the classification because for the longest time. High cap meant you wound it. Yeah. Mid cap means you did, but there's also low caps because you don't want wind low caps. Well, there's there's real caps. Isn't that the thirty rounders or real yeah. cap is the term for that? Thirty so, rounders, yeah. And then I thought low cap was like your sixty to ninety round area or something like that, mm-hmm. and then your mid cap is your, you know, one twenty. But I guess we're gonna have to start using different capacities. <laughs> Lucky's like it's oh. still almost half of the high cap. Dude, <laughs> what kind of high caps are you using? I've never seen a, a high cap. Round normally high 300 cap. rounds. Well, yeah. Isn't there there's three to 400? That, there's I've some fat ones to... that look like the Surefire mags that have 600 rounds in them now, too. I don't know oh, really wow. makes those. But those are pretty cool. So, when it comes to uh, national Milsim event producers that restrict the number of magazines, mid cap magazines for a rifleman, do you viewers think it's going to have a trend of pushing? To drive sales to buy these things. Yes. Because they're limiting the number of mid-capacity magazines. Well, I checked on Evic the other day, and they said they were out of stock. So I feel like people want these bad. So I'm guess, I'm going to say that, A, everybody who wants an advantage is going to go after these. But at the same time, also, there's going to be a big negative to the sport because we're not going to get all those cool reloading mag flip videos anymore because no one's going to have to reload anymore. I mean, well, true. You know what I mean? True. And <laughs> that, because it goes back to the spirit of the game. Yeah. Because a good game is based on attrition. You want the yo-yo effect. You don't want somebody, one side to just push yep. the, the junk in of, of another side. You know, And so you, you, you want the back and forth. So does this give advantage to the users... So, or, or do they, instead of 
So like AMS is seven. Yeah. If I remember right, seven mid cap magazine. So does AMS put in a caveat that says if you're running these magazines, you can only run four, for example. Well, I mean, here's the the kick. Here's the because the, you're that now you're isolating. Yeah. How do you identify them? True. You know, like I mean, are we going to have mad checks? And like here on the other thing, if you can we pull that graphic up real quick again for that picture? Yep. Because I haven't gotten a real close look at them yet. So. I could easily disguise that as another magazine, make it look like a, like a K-Dub mag or a, um, a Crytek mag, you know, that look like the PTS, the P, not PTS, the, uh, the Magpul mags from back in the day. So, I mean, I could do a little bit of work and maybe some dremeling, and I could make that not look like what it is, and then no one would be the wiser. So I'm going to say that this is going to raise some issues, some definitive issues, you know? Definitely. I mean, you know, for a magazine, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but they they retail for about most EPMs are twenty five bucks. I think so. Uh, let me look it up real quick. Because let me, let me I mean they, they sell maintenance kits. It's they have a follower, so you can see how many rounds you have left. But literally two hundred fifty rounds. Are you ever going to get to that orange follower? No. Ever? Well, I, I will because I just shoot at everything that moves. Yeah, I, have, I have zero trigger discipline. But um, what's the name of it? The EP EPM one. EPM one. EPM one. Um, Woodcock says I believe we should be teaching conservation of ammo. I have never heard him say conservation of anything in his life before. So that's, he is firmly on the other side of any conservation issue. I'm calling him out on that one. I mean, we're getting a lot of comments that 170, 180 rounds or less, you know, is should be considered a mid cap. Anything um, higher would be high cap. I'm not seeing him here. Uh, no, it's EPM two, I guess, because EPM one is the 308. Looks Actually, like. Lucky Lucky says 250 isn't terrible. Biggest mid cap before this is 170. Actually, no. Before this was 190, it was the Evic, Evic, Evic brought back the Banff magazine. Now I'm dating myself. I Banff even... mags were created by a guy like way in the early 2000s. Um, but Evic brought them back um, and actually sells them on our website. They're 190 round uh, BAMF uh, magazines. What does that stand for? That, I don't that... know. <laughs> I have no clue what Badass um, Mother Forker, if you're a fan of The Good Place. Yeah, I remember we got a... <laughs> I, I did. That's I a good know. place. I forkered. You know what I'm saying? I forkered. I understand. <laughs> you did, did you not watch The Good Place? So you lucky. get on that. <laughs> Jonathan trying... Harris says, it wouldn't be an issue if we stuck to a round cap instead of a mag cap. The number of BBs, that's true. Okay, so. That's true. The old BAMPs were between 10 and $100. I'm guessing. So well, probably... no, no. That's basically how many you buy. Oh, okay. So let's call it 10 bucks for the old ones. And I can't find this on their website right now for the new ones. The EPMs? Yeah, they it, the only the 308s come up, so they must be completely sold out. Good job, whoever got them, because... Did you put EPM? Yeah, I, I tried EPM 1, EPM 2. All that came up was a 308 mag. Just so, EPM? Just EPM? Just, just try that? EPM. Okay. Yeah, and see what comes up. See what comes up. He's, he's searching evic.com, It's It's way. not the... Most user friendly all the time. Oh, here we go. We got Portugal in the house. Twenty two ninety five. That's a reasonably priced magazine. Twenty three bucks. Twenty three bucks. That's reasonably priced. I can I can get behind that. And let's see if they're available right now. So okay, that you can still get the cart. Yep, you can still get them. So oh no, that's, that's sorry. That's the one twenty round. Oh, hold on. Maybe I'm I, I screwed up here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I, all right. Feel free to roast me in the chat, guys. Because but I I'm, do like the idea of limiting the number of BBs. You can actually carry. So it really yeah, so then it doesn't matter if you're running a high cap or a mid cap. You just say, hey, this but how you're gonna make people count their BBs? Um, unfortunately that's kind of where I mean, we're going to. Um, I mean I mean, believe it or not, if for those viewers, just pull out your bag of BBs, just count one hundred. That's all I'm asking. Count one hundred sometime and see how long that takes you. And then think about, oh my gosh, I I have to for count out you, like 3,000. For any of you who <laughs> want to work in the airsoft industry and you, you pick a company that happens to make magazines, you will end up dumping a magazine into a bucket and then counting each BB at some point in your career. Just a warning. I'm not saying how I know that, but it might have happened so to both of us. <laughs> Cody Clegg says, yeah, I would only run three of the EPM mags in a Milsim game anyway. Because you'll be a little bit lighter because you're not running seven mags. Well, plus he's probably a JPC guy, and they only have room for three mags on the front anyway. So you know that this works would out answer the built-in triple mag 
plate carriers. Battle belts will be a thing of the past because they won't have to have the spot for the three extra That's, mags on their belt. You know, belt. hey, there's an advantage yep. right there. Of course, you'll have to like stick your pistol in your back pocket yep. or something, but you'll figure it out. You guys are smart people. So yeah, so that would work on those. They'd work on the, the Valken laser cut plate carriers because they have a triple mag pouch built and in actually, too. I, I'm not a plate carrier guy, but I, I, I've tried on some of the newer ones and they're, they've gotten a lot better than the last time I had to wear body armor. So I'm actually thinking it might be a good time to the, switch. Jonathan says there are events in North Carolina with ammo count restrictions as opposed to mag count restrictions. So you can just you go. put it in any way you want it's, and you're on the honor system, I guess? I guess so. I guess. Okay. All right. So next up, this is a wonderful one. It's very interesting. Very interesting. What's up next? So the, the next one is... Is this and, thing never be allowed in the U.S.? No, no, no. Hold okay. on. Hold on. Oh, this is this, one. this is the G&G white controller. So g and is installing uh, electronic control units that you don't have to plug them into something to program them. So they actually have a small remote that you can see there on the screen um, that they actually call the white controller um, where you can actually change rate of fire and all these cool features. I mean, there's lots of buttons there. You can actually see that. But what there's, there's another caveat to that. Field owners can buy the black controller, which can override a white controller, even lock it out. Yeah. So, you guys know me. You know I'm kind of Captain Anti-Authority. And I'm going to say right now, the convenience of programming your own gun sounds great. But anybody else being able to control my gun or control what I do outside of me, even if it's perfectly within their rights... Just tickles me wrong. It's just Big Brother. That's the only thing that. That's my only problem with it. Right Ooh, now. Lucky Branch says this is another cheater unit weapon that you can change on the fly. Um, this is an event coordinator nightmare. I didn't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to open up your smartphone. You can just reach in your pocket and switch it. So if someone calls you out for shooting full auto, you can reach in your pocket, switch it over to semi, and then when they test your gun, it only shoots semi. Like, sorry, did I just teach you all how to cheat real quick? Oh, Oops. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Because I was thinking, I you know, I was honestly giving benefit of the doubt. So say if, you know, a rental a field owner with a rental fleet that has this uh, electronic control units in their rental guns, you know, they can literally... Turn them on if, and off. If, start if a kid again. is playing unsafe and shooting unsafe, they can literally lock his gun and they don't have to worry about him pulling the mag out. I was, I was really giving the benefit of the doubt, but when Lucky says, wow, you can chrono at a specific and then change the performance of the gun without actually having to open it up that's yeah that's, that's yep, a different that's story now what i do like about for rental fleets i like the fact that you can make, make uh, nds in the setup area negligent discharges like in where you don't have a barrel bag and you have your mag in and you stupidly shoot someone in the knee or something like that from a foot away um you can make those a thing of the past because basically Every time each game indexes, the field just shuts down everybody's guns, all the rental guns, and then they turn them back on when the game starts again. Yeah. You know, So the guns don't work. You know, actually, here's a caveat that I'd like to see to that. Instead of having it on a controller, have some kind of sensor you walk by. So you have on-off sensors when you enter the field. So you enter the field and it turns your gun on. You exit the field it turns it off. That would be really cool. Because then you don't have to worry about new players mishandling their guns. And But even though it's half the time old players that mishandle their guns, I've done it. Everybody's on it. So I just got a, a message from Justin Mahoney asking us to share his events in the uh, event segment. I'm, does, I'm not does, he, quite, does he do cool stuff? I'm not quite sure which events they are. Are they like his birthday party? His well, I don't know. Because <laughs> Justin Mahoney, I don't know if he's tied to a field or an event company. Um, I just don't know that off, off memory. Um, Lucky Branch says, for rental fleets with the black card, it's cool because you can set up different games. Mm -hmm. Plus staging area set. Now, that's a good point. See? That yep. is a good point. Great minds think alike, Lucky. Hey, yeah. so, Jay, call sign Psycho Garcia Psycho. from Airsoft Revolution 15's in the house. And, oh, also, G Gorilla Airsoft has all joined us. Joe Mini. Except for Beast. I don't know what. Beast has been antisocial after SHOT Show. I don't know what's oh, up with Oh, there's that. Ben. There's ben Joe. Joe. Where's Jesse? I actually posted a Did little selfie. I finally posted that selfie with Joe I took at Copperhead like six months ago. Yeah. yeah. That was cool. Zeb Zengel... Um, is saying rental guns are the only application. I agree with it. you. <gasps> totally agree with you. Al Covey, one of one of longtime friends, great dude, 
Thumpy's Airsoft. Mm, that's old school, right? He there. wrote blog airsoft blogs like nobody else. Man, he was the he was the champ. <laughs> he was the champ. Um, so that's, Orhan, that's back when people actually read things. Now everybody just watches little thumbnail screens, and that's it. Yeah, people actually read back then. Apparently, Orhan actually has a good quote. Mama used to say, "Quote: Don't make a good boy go bad." End quote. As temptation creeps closer and the room for escape broadens, I think you'll unfortunately be inviting cheater-esque behavior. That is the most eloquent comment I think we've ever had in the show's history. Like, I don't know why, I don't know why Turk's not writing novels at this point because basically your your hands are pretty, is what I'm saying. They make pretty sounds. Yeah. <laughs> we got Matt Holler from Mid Missouri Airsoft and Missouri Did we? Oh, Airsoft. Oh, hey, what's up, Matt? Got to site. say hi to him. Uh, Turk says it's Red Arrow Milsim that Justin is talking about. So Soto says Jesse is at his house drinking the rest of his sissy beer. Sissy beer? Is that where Jesse Grossi what's, is? What's right sissy now? beer? That's I don't a know. question. I want to know what sissy beer is. Is that like Bud Light? He better not be talking trash about Coors because that's full of mocky, Rocky Mountain goodness. You better oh, understand. Uh, Justin Mahoney's talking about Red Arrow Milson. Yeah, that's what I said. I just said that. I have not, on my Facebook calendar, I do not have a red arrow Milson between now and April. So send us an invite. So I'm that, pretty that's sure. That's a good caveat. We can have we done that little bumper yet about how you can get your events on here? Have we repeated that five thousand? Go times? ahead. Yeah. So make us a host, a co-host to your Facebook event, and then we'll just do the rest. We'll fill it all in from there. And then if you can, please send us a little blurb about what special about it. is it a Milsim? Is it a scavenger hunt? Is it Wild West? Just let us know. We'll sh- give you a shout out. We'll let everybody know everything we can. Especially if we haven't been there, the blurb really helps us. So help us help you. Yep. It takes two minutes. All right. So next up, I think the viewers are going to find this pretty interesting. Mm. This is the Dominus by Tag. Why isn't Corey here? <laughs> no, Dominus Cor- Mortar. Corey was a Charlie. Like We need Corey Jameson in the chat right now. He is our official resident friend of the show mortar expert. He oh, can tell us exactly true. how it works. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think it works like a real mortar, but so uh, they had this on display at uh, SHOT Show 2020, which they've been talking about it for quite some time. I think they initially started talking about this like in 2015, 2014. Um, all we could get from Mr. Mark uh, Butman there from mm-hmm. Russia um, is there's two settings, low and high. Low shoots 70 to 150 meters and high shoots 150 to 300 were they do you think when they had the meeting to design this they're going like they're they're coming up with the specs on what they can do and they're just like let's make sure this never gets allowed to be used anywhere like because that's just like a ridiculous amount of range that's a football field and a half dude now emr event (coughs) park would have enough range to shoot the dominus mortar because we are EMR. EMR. Mm-hmm. That's right. You could do it at Copperhead. You could do it at Old D-Day, but you'd never get through the trees. Okay, but so here. We know tagging rounds. Yeah. We you know you got the blue tips, Archangel, you got all the... So you got air bursts. Can you imagine somebody's 300 meters away? You don't even hear the shot. And you're just bebopping along, and a tagging round hits you in the top of the dome. They'd have Out of be, nowhere. They'd have to be on a fuse. That's the only way you could do it safely. They'd have to They'd have to be airburst rounds. That's the only way I'd, I'd, I'd ever allow something like that, I think. If I was well, but here's the thing. Look at that station, airburst, whether it's airborne 70 meters or yeah. 300, is it a timer or is it what? Because if it's set to a timer, it'll never get anywhere near well, the you, max you effective have to, range. Just like a real mortar round, you have to adjust the timer based on... So what I see, that to make this work safely, you're going to need actual mortar teams. You're going to need an FO... Who knows how to crawl, call elevation and everything right? You're going to need a mortar team that can figure out the elevation at the target and the time of flight, so they can set the fuses. Like this is a this is not a joke toy. This is something yeah. that's going to require like skill and training a lot before you, <laughs> do you use it on the centurion. Field. All the centurion folks are all going yes, yes, yes. No, so yes. The problem is Javier is going to be running around shooting that from the hip. That's the only problem with that. He's not actually going to arc anything. He's just going to. You know, trigger fire it. Al Covey just came in at the right time because he says, I hope you were going to get to the mortar. I want mortars and big games so, so bad. Uh, Zonksna has one of has one that shoots water balloons but never quite got it perfected. Is that the one that Navarish did the video on like two or three years ago? I have n- I think no so. idea. I don't know. No, I think Z- Zonksna is in Spain, I think, if I recall. Yeah. Um, but yes, the closest anybody's ever got to a real mortar is basically 
HPing PVC with a throw lever and just kind of <laughs> with with the Nerf football rounds, you know, and just kind of you know, you know what we don't see enough of in airsoft trebuchets and catapults. Why is there not more tra- trebuchets and catapults? Oh, like, come yeah. on, for real. Like, Everybody's I mean, saying mortar teams would make the game I'm dope serious. as hell. I, and I'm really sad that we don't have, you know, Corey in here because Corey would be just losing his shit right now because this is like, he'd be telling us all about Woodcock it. Woodcock is saying if it was in play, everybody would, it would have to be a helmet only game, which I mean. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And you, and also I'd, I'd add, you probably want to have a full face shield game as well for that. Helmet and full face shield should probably be required. Lucky's saying you'd have to make the front end of the round crushable. Makes Ooh, sense. Genius. Impact. Makes sense. Impact. Yes. I mean, and also you'd have to have a really light impact fuse on that if you did it because... Um, you want to make sure it detonates before it actually like delivers any energy to people. Raptor Dave actually says admin use only. <gasps> Dave, that, high five right there. Genius. Co- Thinking outside the yeah. box. Yeah, that makes sense. Because, because you bring a lot to the game. Because also, too, I mean, it, ho- it goes back to the whole, okay, what's what's the circumference of the kill zone? If, get, get if it impacts on the ground. Because, you know... Most people say BB shower grenades or whatever, you know, within a 15-foot radius. I mean, technically, this is a mortar. This is supposed to be much bigger than a grenade. So what I like the, about... Was the, it would the effective range on the ground what I, what I like 50 about the, feet? What I like about tagging rounds in general, either the two or three launch ones, or I'm assuming they'll have explosive ones for this, is that <clears throat> it adds some randomness to the game that kind of gives you full immersion. And I think that's really rad because what you can do is if, you, if BB strikes all that gets you, with you know these explosive rounds, you could have one blow up right next to you and not get hit. You could have one blow up thirty feet away and hit you with a BB. Like I like yeah. the randomness of it, you know. Craig McCarter says left five zero FFE <laughs> over. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about right there. Shake and bake, a little shake and bake afterwards. Yeah, shake and shake bake. and bake. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so who's El Diablo? Is that me or you? I was talking about shake and bake, like White Willie P followed by high explosive. No, rounds. I was like shake. And, ba- and bake. Oh, you gotta shake it. Wait, is it? No, from shake? Talladega Nights. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to like you put it in the bag, you wrap it up, and then you put it in the <laughs> oven, you take it out. Like that is an underappreciated movie in every yeah. aspect. Oh, um, Lucky Brand says, bro, this will make my math skills and T and E skills worth having. Oh, dude, I, I can still do Call for Fire. I think <laughs> you. This is me, uh, and then you, you have your location, and then the location of the tar- or the bearing and the azimuth to the tar- and range of the target. Yeah. It's- so then, Al Al Covey has a point. The physics scare the crap out of him. Supposedly full size Nerf footballs. We're talking full size Nerf mm-hmm. footballs. Okay, not not the Nerf rockets, but full size Nerf footballs in a high arc can give you a concussion or even break bones if they hit an unprepared player. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's true. <laughs> well, time out. Well, you suck. Okay, it wasn't my job. I had to fill in for people like you. I can fight and call for fire. I can do both things. Take that, Will. So, um. <laughs> so Austin says, admin use with it in a survival-like game uh, would be dope, especially with a smoke round that counts like a death death cloud. So this, this would enhance uh, admin use because, again, if some, but some faction is pushing in another faction and they've got a good foothold, I mean, admins just kind of, they you know what? launch these mortars into yeah. that area, and it's like, oh, psh, you either vacate or you're dead. Here's the thing. We've no actually done the rest. research on this. I, we're idiots. So when we were at uh, War Game Oklahoma, how many people did we freak out with the, with the, with the arrows coming out of the sky and whistling out of the sky? Oh, people dude, were freaking that's true. out about it. The so zing, we've already the done the arrows. research with yep. the Zing bows on this. The bows didn't blow up. The bows just whistled. They didn't hurt, and they still scared the crap so out of everybody. So if the mortar rounds actually had whistlers built into them, <gasps> dude, that's that's insane. That's like Mr. you start Bobby. hearing that, Mr. and you're Bobby. like, "Where do I go? I gotta run." <laughs> make make that happen, sir. And I have to say, like, you know, if the funny thing about the the guys from Tagen, having finally met them a couple times, is they just ooze the word Russian. Like I've never met people who are more Russian. Than the tagging guys in every positive way I can mean it. Like they just, they look like you know, like Cossacks from like a bad movie in like the fifties yep. or the sixties. It's rad. Oh, ooh, oh. call for fire and call and cast. Yeah, I mean, and who's who's the cast? The only people with cast right now are Third Coast, right? So what Third Coast needs now is indirect, and officially they are the coolest extras you can get for airsoft. Is that what we're calling it? 
But Will did say there's going to be a real trebuchet at this year's Avalon. I actually, so true story, I was at Burgett. Francisco, you may remember this. So it was, it was I think, my second Burgett. I was the commander of 25 sniper teams. So that's 50 dudes. 50 dudes, okay. So, and there was a point at the end of the game where this enemy convoy was going through the village. And if the convoy cleared the other side of the village, the team controlling the convoy would win. I'm literally in a fortified deer stand. So it's it's about a 10 by 10, and it's about three stories high. And literally, it's got corrugated metal as walls and a roof, yeah. and there's a stairwell coming up. So me and Bill Perigo get up there, and he's watching the ladder coming up. And I'm literally listening to people over the radio that are in the village calling to me the coordinates of the convoy and I'm calling in indirect fire and the admin are rolling up on ATVs with like parachute flares and fireworks and stuff and it makes the convoy stop for like five minutes so they figure out where me and Bill are and they come rolling to to and again metal corrugated hut three stories high it was loud, and all I'm doing is talking to admin on a little Nokia monochromatic cell phone calling in fire, <laughs> and that was the most epic, epic day from Burget to the second Burget event I ever went to in Sweden. What, it you was just amazing. gave me a minute of nostalgia there, sir, because I... Can we have a some thumbs up and hearts in the chat for the Nokia, Nokia coffin phone? The greatest <laughs> cell phone ever made. Yes. Now, if you're too young to have had a Nokia coffin phone... This thing would literally, like, you could turn it, you could charge it, and then it would last for, like, two weeks on one charge if you didn't make any calls. Um, I think it had, like, 20 hours of talk time, and I've literally seen people drive their cars over it, and it'd be just fine. It was, like, the, the greatest cell phone ever, and especially for all those people who get their smartphones shut out, it would be great to have that wonderful Nokia phone for yep. airsoft use, because it's, you could just, if, if you ran out of BBs, you just could throw it at someone. It was that, it was that tough. So, we got, we got one more, and... This has been talked about a lot since SHOT Show 2020. To Talk to death. So this is the Lancer Tactical Mark 19. Now, we all know by now it is HPA powered. Mm. There's two inner barrel, AEG inner barrels in that one barrel, and it's HPA powered. Okay, It's, it's no different than a micro gun or a mini gun. But it has brought up some really interesting uh, discussion about full auto grenade launcher. Well, I'd I just like to first bring up the point that everybody asked for this. And then when they said we made it, but it cost $8,000 because it's a specialty item and really hard to make. Oh, because they want it for free. And then everybody is now bitching that it's $8,000. <laughs> so I just want to get that right out of the way, right off the bat. Just, you know, you, you asked for it, they built it, and now you're complaining about how much it costs. So airsofters just... Shame yourselves. So, I mean, <laughs> you know, one mortars, you still have to load and fire, adjust fire. Yeah. Um, you have the Craft Apple Works, which is the six round, which you actually wind. Mm -hmm. That's probably the close. It's still semi-auto um, because you still have to pull the trigger. You have to let it cycle, pull the trigger, let it cycle, pull the trigger. But now we're talking, like, if it was possible to do a full auto grenade launcher in Airsoft, would we want that? I, I don't, because I can't afford it. So I know it's going to be used against me. So I would say no. Now, if I had $10,000 of disposable income, I'd say yes, because I want to use it on people. William Soto says, how are wars won? With money. money. Yep, there you go. <laughs> so what Will is telling me, I need to have a credit card that the wife doesn't see the balance on. I got you, brother. <laughs> yep. Because we, we did have a point like, oh, $8,000. Well... So the dude buying it for eight thousand is not worried about the cost of tagging rounds to no, load he's that not. thing. No, that guy has a lot of that is Dan Bilzerian for Airsoft, essentially, who's ever buying that. You have more money than sense. Al says there are guys online with Mark 19s that do fire mini nerfs with the whistlers and for way, way cheaper than eight thousand. Ooh. It is not a unicorn. Please send us links. I want to see these videos. I want to I want to do my own homework. Thank you for the education, sir. Send us links. Because because literally, because you see a lot of Humvees or a lot of technicals now rolling with the the micro guns mm -hmm. or the mini guns. But you imagine one that was that's full auto 
these Nerf rocket whistlers that's a technical hunter killer. Like literally, they're just going around looking for other vehicles, and they just go dup 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 dup, no, 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 and no. just like four or five Nerf whistlers just hit the side of a Humvee. That is a that's awesome on a buggy, like a UTV. Just one of those one man buggies. Guy sitting on the back oh. with the mark. Yeah, that'd be the shit. Oh. Thanks for calling the debrief. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Maryland. Hey guys, it's Javier. Hey What's Javier. Up? How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. I had to call because you guys uh, are bringing up uh, two great things at the end here. Um, the, the mortar and the Mark 19. I think it goes to a greater need in the airsoft community for a true heavy weapons renaissance. I think we're lacking like heavy Ooh. firepower across the board. I wanted to see a... numbers, equalized vehicles. I want to see a, a true gun team in Airsoft. Like, I want to see a gun team that has to, like, hump a 240 and a tripod and does the whole, like, drop the 240. No, but, I mean, yards. Javier's got cool. it right. I mean, we lack... Yeah. I mean, the, okay, we got su support weapons, suppress suppressive fire support weapons, but we don't have heavy weapons in Airsoft. Well, I mean, what is the, the heaviest weapon that you see actually carried? around because i've seen micro guns and mini guns carried i i've seen replica 50 well, cals mean, mounted yeah what about you javier think, think no think about think about the, the the change the change in complete strategy and the way we have to play at milson events or at big games when you know that out there somewhere looming is the possibility that indirect fire that'll take out in large areas could rain on you potentially when that's a real consistent possibility not not because and right now every, no matter where you go it, it's a possibility but you can see the admin coming ready to call you out yeah but not but knowing but now knowing that there's a mortar team out there or you know or or, or maybe an artillery piece dropping in something you know or, or and, and once again are vehicles vehicles that are like wait a minute i don't just have to worry about a guy with a a random guy with a rocket. I got to worry about a, a piece as far away that I can't even see getting me. Javier, you've stumbled across something genius here, dude. Because in airsoft, one of my biggest complaints and the biggest thing I had to learn is that you could just walk right at the edge of someone's AEG range and be invincible, right? And so you didn't care if they saw where you're going because they'd have to move into your range to engage you. But now, if you can actually shoot beyond normal visual range, quote unquote. You get out, you're always under threat of being attacked, so you actually have to move in ways so that you never get spotted. Oh, wow, that would add a whole new dynamic to the game, man. Well, what, is, what does it also do? What does it also do to, the, to the, one of the biggest complaints in Airsoft? Oh, my God, there's 20, 30 guys on the corner of this building just hanging out. Yes, yep. you know? yes. And, th and that's one of, the, one of the reasons why I really enjoy the fold gap Airsoft scenario, because... Um, you know, it, it grew out of the fold gap paintball scenario, which have all the paintball tanks, mm -hmm. but the paintball crews actually come to the airsoft scenario and mm -hmm. drive around where they have turret turrets on their vehicles shooting these rockets. And literally, when those things come around, people really scatter. They they don't they don't like to be anywhere near those things. No, and uh, and what... the only way to take them down is you either have to hit them from a from the rear. With a, with, a, with a rocket, or run up to them and throw a satchel charge on it. That sounds fun. Dude. Yeah. Well, I mean, and here's the <laughs> so thing. For, is, so, sorry. So go. right now, if you're lucky, you'll go to an event, and, I mean, you'll get a one-off. Mm -hmm. You'll get an event company that, you know, kind of puts things together and says, all right, we're going to run a mortar pit. Or you're going to get somebody that's, you know, ingenious enough and, and you know, time and money enough. I'm going to put together this, you know, this artillery system. It's just uh, – it's but the problem is, is because, you know, there's no accessibility on a larger scale. I mean, now with the tag and mortar, the real mortar, if you can buy it in the U.S. and if it's not, you know, put you in the poorhouse expensive, you can change the way uh, large scale events have to fight and maneuver. Well, you change the way the battle space shifts. Here's a here's a question for you, Javier, since you're on the promoter side of the things. Um, would you allow anybody who walks up with this mortar system to use it in your game? Or would you require some kind of Friday or Saturday morning qualification they have to go through to prove they're not going to like accidentally shoot themselves or shoot it out outside the field limits? 
I think it's within reason, um, especially at, at least under once you understand how the system works better. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's only been really one video talking about it. Not know how does it fire, where does it fall, how does it work more in depth. But once you understand how it works, I don't think it's outside of the range uh, of reason for a promoter to be like, all right, you can sign up, and obviously you're going to have to clear the the, the system. Because it's not really a weapon, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. toy still, so it's a the system with the event producer. And then it's the event producer's discretion, discretion at that point. Do I simply take them on as an assigned mortar team, you know, as part of the event? Or do I say, okay, you can be as part of the mortar team, but on Friday or on Saturday morning before you get going, we're going to put, you know, five rounds down range, and I'm going to see that you can... Hit you know, near, where you, well, and, near where you're aiming. And, here, and here's, here's the other thing. It's all about dissemination of information. So if somebody got this and they brought it to an event, most likely, and I give the benefit of the doubt, most likely they would contact the event owner mm -hmm. and say, hey, I'd like yeah. to bring this. Where would it fall into the rule set? Because then the event owner not only has to, you know, safety, yes, just like Javier said, but then it has to be communicated to the entire player base that Stuff's what, just going to explode what, randomly around no, you. No, well, what the rules are oh, okay. and, and how do you react to it. So if I was an event host and somebody was bringing it, I would hope that they would bring bring it to my attention before actually showing up with it. I'd actually take you one step farther because I, if I had a, if I was a promoter or running a field, I'd require that the team has to be attached to some kind of leadership. So if you have enough to have one per platoon, yeah, they have to follow yeah. the platoon leader around. If gotcha. you have one per company, part because of, that of, cannot be fired the, unless everybody knows it's about to be fired. Part, Part of the part of the headquarters element, like you yep. would be in real life. Well, know, not only that, whatever unit it is. Not only that, but it gives you time yeah. as a promoter to get your admins to where the rounds are going to land. So that if you have a quick warning that you're like, I need to get an admin in that area, you don't have people that just have an explosion that happens randomly and they go, that was yeah. weird, and they just walk away. So you know, there's 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 multiple levels to making that work within a game framework. So I can, yeah. The, and, the, I, and I honestly, I honestly think that I honestly think, I think that. Hardware of, of this kind of indirect fire or of heavy fire. So let's say even those uh, you know 50 cals you can buy uh, that are replicas that you can set up the fire uh, out of it with a fusion engineer or with a excuse me, with a HPA or whatever. Um, I think more fields should invest in those. And then I think if the like the tagging mortars come out, I think that's an excellent investment for an event producer. Yes. Yeah. To, you know. To, augment, to increase the value of their events and their especially, so I can I know and and this and I'm not and this is not spilling a secret. No, just knowing guys like Sal, he's drooling over the idea of putting a mortar team to work in a TCA event. Just like you know, we, we're drooling over the idea of the security events to do the same thing. Just like you saw the guys comment, you know. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Oh, I think we actually might have a. Do we have another call? We're gonna have to let you go. I think we got our nope, secondary we, line. No, we right actually now. we got to get to events. Do we have to do that already? Yeah, oh, we shit. have to get to events. Oh wow! Hey, thanks for calling already. in, Javier. Thanks, man. Javier, man. I appreciate it, brother. I, I, heard, here, guys. I heard a beep. Oh, I didn't know what it was. Was that? How do you make that beep? Was that you making that beep? Or was you mean that, that beep? No, there was another beep. I oh, heard, I I heard another beep there. So, um, or am I just? Do I have tonight? We're gonna go cut to a quick commercial and then we're gonna come back. With our event segment, we've got about 16 events to talk about between I get now get, and April. i got to refill my but coverage. But our mod, AI 3.0, mm -hmm. is going to scroll through all the comments. And before we end the segment, it's going to spit out a name of who the winner is of going to be the Airsoft Innovations Reusable Grenade. Your choice. Either the Burst or... Um, Cyclone? Cyclone. I couldn't remember. Do we have any Thank Tornado 2s, or do we, do we not get those yet? Is that is that coming down the line, maybe? Maybe. Maybe. But they just haven't sent them to us yet. That's so. what I'm saying. Like, I just didn't know if, they, if yeah. they're they coming, or what's up with that. <laughs> but uh, I know as soon as the AI boys hear that, they'll like, they I love know, sending right? out stuff. So that, that's how I get you guys good stuff in the mix. You know what I'm saying? So don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to cut to a quick commercial, then do events. And during the event segment, we're going to announce the winner of the Airsoft Innovations Grid 8. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Am I go Are we going? So they're on tomorrow What's going on, guys? It's Nigel with Elite Force. Check out the Falcon Debrief. Debrief? Try one more time. <laughs> Check out my briefs. Hey, I like my briefs. Check out the briefs. What's going on, guys? It's Nigel with Elite Force. Check out the Falcon Debrief every Thursday at 8 p.m.
This is the Valken ASL Plus AEG Sierra. They come with a billet style nylon fiber receiver and a three position vented PDW stock that fits LiPo or Li-Ion batteries. We recommend using a Valken 7.4 volt lithium polymer or lithium ion battery, which are sold separately. They also include a 260 round high capacity pistol style magazine and a magazine well adapter that can be easily removed to fit a normal M4 style airsoft magazine. They also include ambidextrous features, including a selector lever and magazine release on both sides and a five inch free floating quad rail with a 98 millimeter recessed mock suppressor. They have upgraded internal components, including rotary style hop up unit with locking increments and a quick change spring that only requires removal of the buttstock and stock tube to access the quick change spring guide. The velocity is 330 feet per second and comes in black. Thanks for watching and please leave a review to tell us what you think. And we are back, Falcon Debrief Airsoft Live Show, episode number one, one, win five. On you, win on you. Five. You, you have a hand. Five. There you go. Five. <laughs> Not five. one bit of rehearsal every week. Not one bit. <laughs> so, man, that was, that was a great topic. Um, if you came in on the tail end of that, we'll be throwing up the uh, rewind. This is about um, as close as um, we do a go get to a product review yeah. show. More on than the anything Falcon else, so. Video YouTube channel or Falcon Debrief uh, SoundCloud. We actually never got to drones either, so that, yeah, might be a, okay. that might be a topic for another day. Yeah. So we have the event segment coming up, sponsored Do by you got my Elite yet? Force. There it is. Ooh, now that is a pretty gun, is what I'm going to say right there. So brand new, just came out. This is the Elite Force uh, Smith & Wesson M&P 40 gas blowback pistol. Shoots 300 FPS with a CO2 magazine. Which you can get from your Valken authorized field or store. I've gotten to handle it a little bit. We had one at SHOT Show, and it feels solid. Um, it's a, I mean, people have a huge fan base for the military and police Smith and Wessons and now people are getting them in airsoft. So yep. high five. I like it. It's, is my, fun. it's my fave. Is it your fave? It is my fave. It beats out the hater? Well, no, that's what, that's, that's what I used as a service weapon. Oh, you were a Smith and Wesson guy? Yep. That's, okay. We actually had the, the old Beretta Chrome Silver 92s in the Ooh. sheriff's office and then we upgraded to these and I was like, thank God. Was it lethal weapon that he always had a 92 F in? Riggs? Yeah. Riggs something. always had a 92 F. Yeah. <laughs> All Every right. movie. Oh, Let's sorry. Start. We actually get to do the events. Yeah. Segment? All right. We'll do the events. Coming up first, we got New Dawn 3 Academia Redux. This is the 22nd of this month. Mirror Tactical's hosting this at Apollo High School in Burlington. And if Hawk is still with us, he might, uh, there might be a proposal there. He might be reproposing. We don't know because he proposed to or his wife. Or renewing his event. vows. Renewing the vows. Yes. Or maybe he gets a second wife. I don't know. I don't know why you like. Oh gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> wow. All right. Operation Bone Strike 4, February 21 to the 23rd. Um, this is TCA in Vicksburg, Mississippi. We'll be there. We'll be there. Just look for the big 20 by 20 compound with a big yellow topper Valken the on top. Palace with EG and Elite Force and Valken Friday night, on one stop. We're going to be playing movies. Oh, that's right. In the compound. We have to finish John Wick 3. We never... Oh, we got 1 and 2 done. We never watched 3. three. We, Maybe so we, we have to just start with so 3. We got, we'll start with 3, and then we still got Fury after that on the list. And then, Oh, yes. And then we Fury. got to, I think we got to rewatch the Mandalorian one, one stop. Just stop by Ooh. on Friday. We'll, we're going to be breaking all kinds of copyright laws coming yes. out with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming up after that, we got Road to Kharkiv, February 21 to 23rd. Um, Milsim West event, Hill 559 in Clovis, California. Awesome place, tons of great events, big big area. If you got those long range guns, this is where you're gonna, you're gonna want to go. Remember, if you're going to Milsim West, full immersion. If you're playing NATO, you need to be top to bottom guns, everything authentic. Same thing with Russian. So make sure you check that rule set before you sign up if you haven't gone yet before. Um, coming up after that, we got Red Dawn 10. March 15th, Mir Tactical at Badlands Paintball Field in Crete, Illinois. Mir has been really, really busy this spring. You know what? We've never been, we've never had anybody that could attest to what Badlands is like. But, I mean, it's, we need somebody to tell us. We need a report. We need a report. We need a report. So, we need a report. Debrief Nation, let us know what's up. Yeah. No, um, BB Shire. 
BB Shire. Sorry. BB Shire. Sorry. Well, you 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 lead the alliance. I didn't want didn't know if you wanted to make this a BB Shire issue. It's not part of our mutual investigation yeah, was, treaty. That's true. I mean, we need that's to true. renegotiate later. <laughs> on, so I really, you know, I, I can't speak for the alliance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I cracked myself up with that one. Uh, Operation Stonebreaker 2020. Uh, March 20 to the 22nd, Third Coast is hoping, hosting this at GTI in Barnwell. Um, Kaiju will be there. Um, yes. I will not be making this trip because I have to watch the fort back home. I sadly will not get to check out Barnwell GTI. I've heard so legendary things about it. I fly to Germany for IWA trade show. It's the European version of SHOT Show. Fly home. I'm home a weekend. I fly gives back to all, New Jersey for a super secret squirrel meeting of the minds because we're coming out with something big. And then from Jersey, I'm going to drive down to GTI, support their event down there, and then drive back up, then fly home at the end of the month. So, and all this for you guys and the community out there. I'm a little jealous. You get to go to the, the home of Big G, the, the, the Jersey Ranch. I mean, I heard that's quite a spread. You guys have the meeting out by the pool, right? That's where you guys normally oh, do it. Oh, dude, it's... Is it nice? It's pretty huge. C- catered? Catered? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm jelly. All right, what we got coming up next? Uh, Saratov? Yep, or Saratov. Saratov Insurgency, March 20th to the 22nd, Appalachian. Milson West is holding this at Panthera. Um, uh, Joe from Ghost Dog actually filled this in. Panthera is supposed to be good. Yeah. So... If you haven't signed up, sign up. Remember, same Milson West caveat. Make sure you are authentic or they will not let you play. Um, coming up after that, we got the Big Airsoft game. I like that name. Mm-hmm. I just like it. It's simple to the point. Yep. East Coast Airsoft Events is hosting at Robin Hood Paintball and Hava the Grace, Maryland. So kind of my old stomping grounds a little yeah. bit. I feel really bad that I didn't get into Airsoft earlier because now I'm finding out that there is a ton of Airsoft in the D.C. area. Like, Maryland has three or four good fields. Virginia has the, a couple. The, this event, they, they really like us uh, when they when we come and support that event. It, it's, a, it's a really big turnout. Good local good yep. local scene? It's just a one-day one Saturday. It's really fun. We need to make it back to the Maryland area because I need to have a triumphant return as my cloutless wonder status right now. That's true. I'm almost as cloutless as Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Um, coming up after that, we got ACS's Airsoft seven year anniversary, March 28th. It's at, hosted by ACS Airsoft in West P- Paducah, Kentucky. And if you're ever there around June, remember Ham Festival, lovely place. Um, and if, you know, anybody's been doing something for seven years, they're doing something right. So please support them. Please keep them open. Help them celebrate. Um, coming up after that, we got Tracien and Copan. March 27th and 29th. I've said that so much, I actually sound like I know what I'm talking about now. Yep. Um, Southern Region. This is held by Centromillion Milsim. <laughs> Centurion. <laughs> You're so waterboard. I know, I know. I just, I just push that. I'm just pushing the envelope. Um, at Arena Training Facility in Blakely, Georgia. This is their big game, what they're known for, their home area. This is where they put on just all kinds of craziness. Dude, I, they're almost sold out. If, if yeah. you wanted to go and you haven't bought your ticket yet, you need to hurry up. Or you they're need to shop in the secondhand forum market. Hope someone cannot make it and you scoop that ticket. Seriously, out if, if you've been thinking, if you're living in the southern region, you know, in that uh, Georgia, Alabama, Florida, northern Florida, and you've been thinking about buying a ticket, buy it now. They are almost sold out. And also remember when you do that, Start. You gotta. You gotta friend all the characters that do Centurion because there's information coming out all the time. I don't know how I would know that, but <laughs> you know, if I was someone who wanted you to know more about it, follow the Facebook page. I do a little bit, yep. especially uh, an, Miss Colonel Ferduga. It's a nice. It's a nice read. He made me uh, catch up on my Mosh code, so I can actually know what's going on. I learned a little most court, most court Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll have Colonel Verduga back uh, as no, a guest. Yeah, I want to actually ask him his country of origin because he sounds way more Pakistani <laughs> than he does like Bolivian. So <laughs> maybe we can get an interview with him after this event Ooh. to see how you know how he did at this event and what his plans are for the future. What if we had both faction leaders talking trash to each other? No, you don't want that. That's is that bad? That that's that's tr- that be, goes down. No. Okay, yeah. That's we can't. Can I can't control that? No. Nope, okay. Don't go on across the streams. <laughs> Okay. Um, what do we got next? I got Castle. lost. Operation Castle. Castle. Operation Castle. Operation Castle, March 27th to the 29th. Uh, Lion Claws is holding this at the prison in Carson City. Three factions, cartel, guards, prisoners. John Lewin Company put on a great show. Um, they're, and, you know, especially what they do best is atmosphere. And if they have a location like a prison, I'm sure they'll do all kinds of weirdness and make you feel uncomfortable. So check it out. Um, also just a great AO to play in great, great for pictures and Instagram. 
Um, coming up after that, we got Operation Southern Watch. This is the 4th to the 5th. Mere Tactical again um, at Hendry Correctional Institute in Immacoli, Florida. Uh, Silo Entertainment will be at this event. <gasps> Are you talking like Silo, the Belgian guy? Is he yes, Belgian? from Europe. Is he, is he Belgian or is he Dutch? Uh, I think he's ne- Netherlands. So it'd be Dutch? Yeah. Netherlands. Okay. Netherlands is not a place. I'm, I'm convinced of it. <laughs> like it's not a real place. Like I'm, I'm with you. We have a warehouse right. in Rotterdam, Netherlands. I'm not saying that like it's there's not a country there. I'm just saying the <laughs> Netherlands is this thing that they this trick they've been the Dutch have been playing on us for like 400 years. They've been like, oh my okay, God. let's tell all the other people <laughs> that that we call our country the Netherlands. Yeah, and then we will get them. And then at home we call it Holland. It's okay, you know. <laughs> and they've been doing that for like 400 years, you know. Like and we just bought into the whole joke. I'm yeah. convinced of it. So Silo Entertainment. If you never uh, if you never heard of them, look them up. Silo Entertainment on YouTube's. You'll be quite surprised. He has he has a lot a lot of videos up. He there. actually rolls with uh, kicking Mustang occasionally. Um, there there there's a group of kind of England Northern Europe YouTubers that are kind of rolling together now. Yep, it's kind of cool to see. Um, apparently everybody's clicking up on YouTube now. There's gonna be gang fights soon. <laughs> <laughs> Um, coming up after that, we got Operation Southern Front 2, um, American Milsom's hosting this, April 3rd to the 5th, D-14 Airsoft in Sanger, Texas, uh, remember, wear your waterproof stuff or stuff you're willing to get wet, because there is a big, wide, is it wide? I, I'm just talking out of my ass here. It's, it's only about six feet wide. But it's deep and gets you wet? And because the water is dirty, you can't see the bottom and you can't gauge what Parts are shallow and what aren't. (laughs) So it's just like a a jump and guess kind of thing? Yes. Okay. So good tough field, great uh, local local community around that field. And, of course, AMS locals are just great. Um, It's what we call call a bridge event. It will kind of introduce you to some of the national level – style of play but you're still playing with local players so you don't it's it's big boy rules but you haven't quite jumped in the big boy pond to play with the big boys yet so you you can kind of learn how things are and then move to the the bigger events um because it is a culture shock the first time you hit a three four hundred man event person excuse me person event um coming back to that we got operation fallen kingdom april 3rd to the 5th lion claws is holding this at fort monmouth in tinton falls this is like uh, an admin area not a training area, so you got office buildings and barracks and chow halls and stuff. Should be a lot of fun. Um, coming up after that, we got Battle at the Depot 2, April 24th to the 26th. M. Sato is, holding, holding, uh, M. Sato is hosting this joint at the Seneca Army Depot in Seneca, New York. Yep. M. Sato. Um, has Run been, by Tom O'Rourke and Joe from Ghost Dog said very good event. And they've been dominant. They've been they've kind of got the, the Northeast region locked down in the last couple of years. M. He, Sato's he, kind of the game he, up He's there. the home, home guy. He's so the yeah. home guy. And if you're looking for something different, I suggest this to everybody. If you're normally like a Southwest player, pick an event somewhere else in the year and go outside your comfort zone because so you'll meet some new people. I, I would I would I would just like to point out. So you can see here the Northeast yeah. doesn't include Ohio. When I <laughs> click over to the Midwest, <laughs> look, Ohio is still not part of a region. If you're an Ohioan and you're angry about being discriminated against by the Kaiju, uh, please contact the BB Shire class action lawyers, the uh, BB Shire, a- was it ACLU? I don't know. What, whatever, the, whatever the lawyers that help out people that are being being discriminated against, and we will, we will get you justice against the Kaiju. He's been, disc- he's been saying naughty things about Ohio as long as I've known him. And I don't think we should stand for that, even though it's a garbage state and no one should live there. So, let's talk about this one. This is a, this is a good one. I, I love Freddie Flux. Okay. Uh, what's oh, yeah? Uh, not the first annual, because that'd be weird to say it was the it first. Would, annual. It would be the first inaugural. First inaugural. It's now the second annual. Also, it could be the second biannual as well, because they mean the same thing. True. So, um, second biannual VFA charity game. <laughs> Uh, Freddie Flux and Company, April 24th to the 26th. Veterans for Airsoft at the Sherwood Forest in La- uh, Sherwood Forest Paintball or Airsoft, just Sherwood Forest is called, in Laporte, Indiana. Um, VFA is a great organization. They get veterans who have not been very active out into a, a community like ours. Um, I'm a big believer in what he does because I'm not a success story of his organization, but I'm a success story of the community. Um, you guys taught me how to be normal again, taught me that I had value and that I was welcome. And that's what this organization is doing. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and so just, I, I always want to pass that forward. So, uh, that's what those guys are doing. They got this great project where they also have gear and stuff. So they're not just giving guys tickets, they're gearing them up and they're putting them on the field yep. and they're putting them with good players. And so they're giving them a good entry to it. So oh, please which, support that. Which speaking of veterans, I, I just want to go back real quick. Um, uh, to Centurion, they do have a, uh, veterans one plus one. Oh, that's right. So if. An attendee that's already bought a ticket, uh, that's a vet, can bring a vet to their game for free. Okay, they also they also help out uh, vets in, at Centurion Mill Sim as well. Well, because they they have a very famous vet that that is one of their admins. Yes, the, the, the famous Bubba himself, Bubba Moore, the Bubba Moore. Yep. All right, I would love to watch the Bubba Moore show. I think that'd be a very <laughs> funny sitcom. You need to. You need to friend him on Facebook and, no, and click on notifications I, I, when he goes live. I feel like I don't. I don't want to slip in there. That's a, that's a, that's a DM <laughs> I just don't want to slip into. I'll let him send the send the request out to me if if he deems me okay. Yeah. Um, and finally, Operations Hornets. Uh, Operation Hornets Nest, uh, June sixth to the seventh. We'll be there. Say yeah. hi. Um, Missouri Airsoft Simulation sim, Simulation Site Event, or as it's officially known now. Big Boy Milsim will be the host. Yep. Um, this is going to be at the old airfield in Rantu, Illinois. I've been hearing really good stuff about this. This is a big aircraft hangar and this maybe some other stuff. Uh, it's it's a closed down airbase. It's, so it's, yep. it's it's not just one hangar. It's like multiple things. The hangar is probably the funnest. Well, yeah, but there's other stuff there. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's so definitely it's, other it's, stuff it's, there. I mean, a hangar is worth going for, yep. but hangar and, plus is even better. And for those that, that are curious, we're like, wait... You guys, Kaiju Peltas, you went from April to June. What about all the events in May? The reason why we mentioned Operation Hornet's Nest, he paid for that spot. He paid for an extended promotion. I'm just saying. I, are, are, that's you, why. are you saying that we're offering a complete debrief package? If you would like to have yes. maybe someone sponsor your events, we can, we can do it on a multi-level promotion. Exactly. Being there and generally yep. maybe, maybe participating in your event. Because typically, you know, for free, we'll do 90 days out. Yep. But... If you want to pay for y- y- your event that's in November to be on the show from now all the way to November, and we've been talking it's about cost a lot, the bucks. Haven't we? Yep, it's it's one million exposure bucks. That's what yeah. it costs you. <laughs> so thank you all very much. It's been a a, a great evening. Winner. Do we have the winner? Oh yes, the winner. winner. So and it's coming up on the teleprompter. The winner. I can't believe they paid for this program. Like this was like a thousand dollars to have a randomizer that inserts it in the chat and like gives it to us. I, I know can't we just believe, blew our budget. I for the can't entire believe year. Big G paid for this. I mean, high five, but dude, I mean, I mean, this money is that was our budget. Parted, you know what I mean? So <laughs> the winner of the Airsoft Innovations Grenade, because we hit fifty live viewers, James Hurst. James Hurst. Is James Hurst, you just won a grenade from AI. Um, by the way, James, you need to be a member of the Alliance so we can get your information. That, that, that is, that, that that's, is an underwriter. That's part of the scam. We, we get you to sign up for the Alliance, so, but we give you something really expensive. James, so. if you are not a member of the Alliance yet, just head on over to valconalliance.com, hit join. Send, then once you do that, send a Facebook message to the Valcon Airsoft Facebook page after the show, and I will reach out to you and t- ask if you want an XL Burst or a Cyclone. And we'll get it shipped out to you. James Hurst, congratulations. High five, James. High five. So, oh, what do we got left There he is. Yes. Oh, he was, he was He's still watching. Game? Yeah. I guess he'll keep, like, that, that would encourage people to stay to the end because, you know, if you don't, if you, if you want to win something and you don't stay, you don't win because that's Oh, we should it. say must be present to win. Yeah, that's a good way to, like, get everybody to stay to the end that's or at true. least log out and then that's log true. back in at the end. It's all, all about right. numbers. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, please give a big shout out and like to our sponsors, Anola Gay and Elite Force Airsoft. And sign up for the Valken Alliance. And we... check out the Alliance regional groups on Facebook. Share events in those groups. We just want more people to have more events to go to and check things out. Mm-hmm. So check us out. Falcon Video on YouTube. YouTube's the Instagrams, Falcon Alliance and Falcon Airsoft. Yep. And on SoundCloud. Falcon Which Debrief. Falcon Debrief. All right. Say hi. We'll see Once you all again, next week. We'll be on the road. time with us. <laughs> later. See you guys later. But there's only one guaranteed way you can have peace, and you can have it in the next second. Surrender. 
I didn't think you had it in you. I'm your huckleberry. We will not go quietly into the night. It is your killer instinct which must be harnessed if you expect to survive in combat. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Remember this day, man. Or it will be yours for all time. What keeps you awake at night? Nothing. I keep other people awake at night. <laughs>